every expert, regardless of political party, regardless of ideology, conservative or liberal, who has ever examined these issues in a serious way will tell you that instances of significant voter fraud are not to be found. The very election fraud President Obama would have us all ignore, like the sheep he perceives us all to be, has, as predicted, reared its ugly head all over the United States. In Texas, the issue was actually discovered on Monday morning when Chambers County Clerk Heather Hawthorne was casting her own ballot and the voter next to her noticed that one of her votes was not filled in when she reviewed her electronic ballot, Hawthorne told 12 News on Tuesday. An error in the voting machine programming by election systems and software, ES&S, caused votes for one statewide court of appeals race not to be entered. When a voter tried to vote straight ticket in either party, according to a release from Chambers County, election systems and software was founded in 1979 and is owned by the McCarthy Group. Back in 2010, the Washington Post reported ES&S was the target of a criminal investigation by the Department of Justice in 2010 due to a shady contract deal. And after that deal, New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg referred to the breakdown of the machines as a royal screw-up. es &S is based in Omaha, Nebraska, the home of operations for globalist Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Wall Street, Hillary's supporter and one of the main focuses of John DeCamp's The Franklin Cover-Up, an investigation of a corporocratic pedophile society that went all the way to the White House. Ironically, Buffett recently asked the question, Mr. Trump, have you no sense of decency, sir? In 2014, I... election systems and software was the largest manufacturer of voting machines in the United States, claiming customers in 4,500 localities in 42 states and two U.S. territories. And if those machines aren't bad enough, as Polizet reported, the George Soros-linked U.K. company Smartmatic provided voting machines for 16 states, including important battleground states like Florida and Arizona. Since the story first broke, the flowchart has disappeared from Smartmatic's website, detailing its reach into the United States, raising further questions about the real status of the Soros-tied voting equipment and whether it is truly being deployed in U.S. elections. A petition begging Congress to have an emergency meeting session to remove the Soros-linked machines has already passed it's required 100,000 signatures. Smartmatic has since doubled down on the debunking of Soros having any link to their organization by publishing on their website that George Soros does not have and has never had any ownership stake in Smartmatic. But then Smartmatic goes on to say, it is no secret that our chairman, Lord Mark Malik Brown, is a member of a number of nonprofit boards, including the Global Board of the Open Society Foundation, Soros foundation. Lord Malik Brown is a highly respected global figure whose credentials include former Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations and former Vice Chairman of the World Economic Forum. It's real simple. Why in the darkest caverns of Hades is an English lord on the board with Soros' Open Society Foundation sporting a mile-long globalist resume overseeing the United States voting process in 16 states. Indiana revealed it had 4,556 double registrations, 3,000 records without birth dates, and 31 registered voters too young to vote. The FBI is currently investigating 19 dead Virginians re-registered to vote in Harrisonburg, Virginia, while a 2012 Pew study revealed that 1.8 million deceased individuals were listed as voters and that 2.75 million are registered in more than one state. And according to the Brennan Center for Justice, vendors are frequently under no legal obligations to notify election officials or the public about problems with their systems as the same failures occur with the same machines year after year in one jurisdiction or another. Isn't it odd how none of the ballots switch over to Donald Trump? John Bound for InfoWars. Com. And we now have video of it actually happening all over the country, flipping the votes. Stay with us. It's Friday, the 28th day of October 2016. 
We are now in the final countdown for the midterm general election. Donald Trump is the tip of the spear for nationalism worldwide. We are 10 days and counting down to the general election. But first, we must interrupt your regularly scheduled programming for this most important of messages. Line on nuclear weapons is that when the president gives the order, it must be followed. There's about four minutes between the order being given and the people responsible for launching nuclear weapons to do so. As president, I will make it clear that the United States will treat cyber attacks just like any other attack. We will be ready with serious political, economic, and military responses. They're voting for peace on planet Earth if they vote for Trump. But if they vote for Hillary, it's war. We came, we saw, he died. <laughs> With her, you'll end up in World War III. I want the Iranians to know that if I'm the president, we will attack Iran. Right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. The U.S. military has just raised the threat level to DEFCON 2. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton is still threatening Russia with military action following unconfirmed reports of further hacking. It's like she's not even concerned about the repercussions. Of course not, because she's... Really loud noise. All right, looks like we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. We'll try to get Leanne back on in a few minutes. When the president gives the order, it must be followed. Vote November 8th. Vote like the world depends on it. And that is a communication to all of humanity that every major analyst across the political spectrum, from Japan to Germany to the United States, from Russia to Mexico, all the major university heads that study geopolitical systems say we're in the greatest danger of nuclear war we've ever been in. And it's all being spearheaded by the crazies that basically fund and finance Hillary Rodham Clinton. Now, undoubtedly, if you're a radio listener, that was powerful audio. If you're a TV viewer, it's even more powerful. The video is up on Infowars.com. This viral video will have Hillary running scared. It was posted yesterday at about 5 o'clock. The Facebook version has 700,000 views. The other YouTube versions have about 300,000. So it's got a million views since it went up about 16 hours ago, 17 hours ago. That's not enough. Okay, it needs 50 million views. And... We need to get this out to everybody. This is what you send to liberals who don't understand what's happening. You send them undoubtedly the most powerful anti-Hillary ad of the 2016 election. Hands down, it's pure veritas, and it shows you the type of world we're going into if we let this, this, this bloodthirsty creature into the White House. So I'm asking everybody to repost it on your Facebook your Twitter, to send the link out, to copy it to your YouTube page, uh, to send it to talk show host, and send it to the Huffington Post, and send it to all of them and say, listen, there's got to be some level of self-preservation instinct you've got. Stop being delusional. Hillary is not the liberal candidate. Hillary is a crime boss. Hillary represents the worst elements on the planet. And that's why it was the inspector general of the intelligence agencies that recommended Hillary's server be investigated three years ago. These leaks aren't coming from the Russians. They're coming from people inside the DNC and inside the Pentagon and inside the NSA. Because they understand this country has been hijacked by foreign interest and the republic is in great danger. And I'm not lionizing the different intelligence agencies, but we've now reached the decision point where most of the people in the agencies, not at the top, but below them, understand how serious the situation is. And InfoWars and others have gotten out the true narrative 
of what's happening so we can now have a real debate about what's unfolding. That said, uh, we've seen levels of propaganda against Donald Trump that I've never seen before. Editing what he has to say, taking out of context, lying, repeating whole cloth lies. And it wasn't that the media was so much better in the last few decades. It's just that they thought they couldn't get away with it. Now, because they're so discredited, what do they have to lose? It's a desperateness. And I noticed uh, I get Google alerts. So every 30 seconds or so, an article comes in that they've written about me these days. Sometimes it's thousands of articles a day. Usually it's about 50 to 100 major publications attack it, uh, yours truly every day. And I don't have time to read through a lot of it. When I read it now, it's whole cloth lies. I, I was reading one big article, big, big, like 20 page write up on me. And it was just all twisted lies. It was like quotes I never said. There weren't even links to videos. It was just, quote, the same people that run the communists and the Nazis are our National Guard. Now, I, I'm quoting the article, but I'm not saying this. They'll take this out of context, too. The same people that run the, that ran the communists and the Nazis are our National Guard. And they want to Call the population. What the? I never said the National Guard. And again, it's these talking points. Formulaic against Trump, myself, the Liberty Movement, you name it. I actually found it. That was Vox. Alex Jones, America's most famous conspiracy theorist, explained. And then, I don't know how you guys just found it so quick, because there's like 100 articles out today, but that's the one. I guess you searched the term uh, where, it, where it said uh, that I say the National Guard wants to call us? What? I say it's our military more awake than anybody, because that's a fact. I just go with the truth. So they know that, and that's why they have articles saying, I want a cop kill, and I want to kill the military, and it's all lies. But their, their readers sit there and comment on it like it's real. And then they go and say he believes Obama sent a tornado you know, to Oklahoma City. A woman called in and said, could it be a weather weapon? I said, they have those, but this probably wasn't. You know, tornadoes are actually at an all-time low. So were hurricanes the last 60 years. That's the real quote. They just have Rachel Maddow say that I said Obama sent a tornado five years ago to Oklahoma City. And it's the same lies laundry listed out, out of context, the government's making frogs gay. I do pieces countering them saying they say it's about making frogs gay. They take the clip out, put it in a Hillary ad. When I was describing how that's what they take out of context. And so these were this laundry list, but now it's hit new level where they just say, Alex Jones says the National Guard runs the Nazis and the Communists, and it's the National Guard that runs everything, and the National Guard is going to kill you and going to invade Texas and kill you. We never said Jade Helm was an actual invasion. We're on record saying it was a simulation for occupation and invasion. And I've talked to, let's not exaggerate, in person, probably 20 of the soldiers that were involved in Jade Helm, and they said we all knew it was absolutely dual use for invading the United States and full spectrum dominance and control of populations. And the Pentagon documents all admit that. It was a conditioning operation. And the military admits of the Army Times that's what they're doing. The military, quite frankly, a lot of times reports on this stuff, hoping the public gets concerned and does something about it. So I don't want to get into myself here. I'm just saying when you look at the level of deception, it is getting crazy. But I want to explain something to all my detractors. The reason we're successful, the reason the information we put out is now the countervailing narrative to your system of lies, your, your kingdom of fraud, your, your tissue of deception, your false reality, is because I've studied history. I've interviewed all the top experts, basically. I'm immersed in this, and we know what we're talking about. I'm looking for the truth. Doesn't mean I have all of it. Doesn't mean I'm infallible, far from it. But trying to tell the truth, trying to be researched, trying to do the right thing is a world of difference from you. So I want to explain something to all the detractors out there because I want to reach out to you. I want you to break free of the matrix. I want you to understand that you're being controlled and you're living in a delusional system. Some of you know that. You're mercenaries. You're very, very cynical. So you just don't care. But a lot of you really do think you're on the winning team. So I want to explain something to you very, very succinctly here, okay? And just hope you listen. 
I'm not trying to win a popularity contest. I'm trying to change the world. I'm not trying to say the countervailing political systems song sheet so that I get accepted and promoted up through the system. That's your worldview, not mine. When Carl Rove confronted me, or I could kind of confronted him, then he confronted me back um, at a D Dallas airport flying out to Cleveland for the RNC. He goes, Alex, <laughs> you just don't play by the rules. <laughs> he starts laughing at me like, like he's got power when an average hour of this show has more viewers and listeners now than Fox News. We've now achieved that. Even mainstream media has to admit it. They are in full panic mode. I've got this guy that's a pundit on a show that runs around grabbing the Republican money every cycle for himself to make sure Democrats win. And he's sitting there, you know, it's come out in the w w WikiLeaks, all of it, you know, the, the Paul Ryan, all of them totally work for the Democrats. And they just think we're so incredibly stupid that, I'm gonna skip this break, that he sat there and he looks at me with a straight face and says, you don't play by the rules and starts laughing like, like I'm a loser, like I'm a failure. InfoWars is undoubtedly bigger than Rush Limbaugh now. Way bigger. With his demographic, he's he's still dominant with old folks and things. That's fine. I'm not in competition with Rush Limbaugh. I want my talking points, my ideas to be forced into the spectrum of what Rush Limbaugh's covering. And guess what? I have succeeded. I've had victory. So this isn't about bragging. This is about you getting a battle report on the war that you're winning, I'm winning, Trump's winning. All the metrics show, and I'm about to get to it in a moment, it's incredible. But just to understand something, I'm not here trying to rearrange deck chairs on the Titanic. I'm not here trying to win a popularity contest. I'm here to shock people with the truth, to let them make fun of me, to let them go through their comfort zone, and then to plant the seeds so down the road, as it gets more and more clear that I'm right, people will listen. And guess what? We're already down the road and what's happened. They have to shut down freedom on the web. They have to shut down free speech because as all this world government openly comes out and it's totally tyrannical and it wants to make you poor by design and make you a permanent impoverished population, you're going to then know I was right. It doesn't matter if you don't go read Carol Quigley's Tragedy and Hope. It doesn't matter if you won't go read Brzezinski's uh, books. It doesn't matter if you won't read Ecoscience by the White House Science Czar. It won't matter. Because you will be forced into reality one way or another. And so that's what's happening. This is a kingdom of con artists that think you're stupid and think that they control you and think that you're dumb. All over Texas, people I personally know have seen their votes flipped. Smart people trying to vote for Trump. Now it's coming out in Maryland, Ohio, Colorado. It's flooding in. Heads of elections in counties are having it happen to them we just played a report in the first five minutes. We now have video in Texas of this happening. But don't worry, CNN came out and talked to a state election official who days before ran from our reporters and said there's no vote flipping, no problems, even though I'm showing it right now. Making you vote for the Democrat, not letting you vote for the Republican. So. We're not getting reports of it flipping from Hillary to Trump around the country. No, no, no. It's always Trump to Hillary or straight ticket to the Democrats. But, oh, CNN, they said that none of it's happening. So I can go back to sleep now. And I love how the formulaic BS is so dumbed down. But Goebbels said good propaganda is really dumbed down if you want to actually dumb down the public. See, slick information, accurate information raises the intellect and the level of discussion. They don't want that. They just think you're dumb and say, conspiracy theorist. If you listen to the people on the ground that survived and said that they got, what, six different stand-down orders directly from Hillary Clinton, they just say that doesn't happen. They're conspiracy theorists. They lived it. They're the heroes. They survived. Their friends died. But the media said they're conspiracy theorists. That's all they've got is to say this person is a leading heretic. This person is a leading individual that challenges the establishment narrative. Well, absolutely, I wear that as a badge of honor. And I am so just incredibly blessed that for whatever reason in my life, I'm in the position to resist these people because these are bad, bad folks, and every fiber of my being wants to stand up against them. But what happens is once somebody signs on to a con,
They get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into it. And they just can't admit they're wrong. They just can't admit what they're doing is wrong. They double down because they don't want to admit that they were wrong or that things are scary. And so things get scarier and scarier and scarier and scarier. Uh, now with the Podesta data dumps, we are up to number 21. Let me show folks some of the stories up on DrudgeReport.com. We can punch that up on screen for TV viewers. Dump 21 developing. Campaign struggles to reach effing dumb young people. Every data dump. Paul Watson just searches the term dumb or basement or black people. And I mean, yesterday it was, man, these are some dumb black people. Yeah, David Brock seems to think black people are dumb. Well, you know, or, oh, yeah, these Bernie Sanders people living in their you know, mother's basements and baristas and uh, these poor people, poor, stupid people. And more and more and more and more and more is coming out. That's the mindset of these individuals, ladies and gentlemen. You've got Hillary basically falling down again yesterday, stumbling around everywhere, looks completely out of her mind. But that's okay, because I'm with her. Now, I'm going to get more into this when we come back from break. But, but first, I want to get into the latest poll numbers and what's happening with election fraud. But just... Understand this. You don't have to believe what I believe. You don't have to see things the way I do. Even though I'm going off what the establishment says themselves are their real plans. You've just got to admit to yourself that the entire power structure that you claim you're against, that you know is screwing you over, that's consolidating control, trying to make you poor to control you, is for Hillary. And I tell you, it's the lottery uh, ticket mentality, people that want to buy into a bandwagon and want to be delusional and feel like they're winners and feel like they're making this really smart, cool choice because we have people like Michelle Obama and Hillary getting up there invoking that he's mean to girls because of some 11-year-old edited tape. Meanwhile, they're hosting rappers that actually sing songs at the White House like Rick Ross about drugging women and raping them. We're going to play these lyrics later. We bleeped it, but but it's coming up. And it's just, it's the level of hypocrisy and all the corruption, and all the evil, and, and just the sickeningness in the videos of, of Michelle's daughters twerking to this, inducting their daughters into big, fat, horrible goblin creatures, you know, that are, that are sitting there teaching people how to be nothing but, but, but whores. So they're inducting our, 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 our entire nation's daughters into all these, you know, filthy uh, prison cultures. And, of course, Rick Ross is a former prison guard who got basically hired to take over the identity of the real Rick Ross to cover up the CIA drug dealing. I mean, the whole thing's a PSYOP. The whole thing's a PSYOP, folks, with Jay-Z and Kanye and all these other people. And they're there at the White House like you're a fool, like you're a moron. Now... Coming up, I'm going to get more into this, but let me just go ahead and break some of this down for you right now. A vote for Hillary is a vote for World War III. And I want to encourage everybody to get that video out to everyone you know. Yes, it's got a million views in the last you know, it's 5, 5 p.m. yesterday. It, it, it needs. I'm going to get mad that it doesn't get 20 million views by the end of the weekend, okay? And, and this is a frustration I have because I've said this thousands of times. If it's just some important video, but not that important compared to other stuff, and it gets 20, 30 million views, 16 million views, whatever the case is, every week this happens, we'll have some video that goes huge. 30 million, you know, uh, on a press conference uh, we had last week. More than 30 million now. And it's not that much important stuff came out in it. You know, it's frustrating. And then something like this would change the election 100% for Trump if you get it out. A vote for Hillary is a vote for World War III is Paul Watson's article that has uh, a version from his YouTube channel posted that shows what we're headed for if Hillary gets in. Very powerful. Again, on Facebook, it's got almost 700,000 views. But that's a YouTube version there. I'm begging everyone. This is an information warfare tool. It's very accurate. It's very truthful. 90% of it is real-world stuff that's happening. The other 10% is what a nuclear attack with a 40-megaton hydrogen bomb would look like hitting New York City. And Leanne McAdoo is in the middle of it. 
like the fiery goddess being uh, burned to bits. It's powerful. And this is better than anything you'll see the Trump campaign put out. I don't really sit there and lobby the Trump campaign, because let's just be frank about our audience. You are the Trump campaign. Trump knows that, by the way. You are the number one group, info warriors, in the Trump support system. So we brought Trump. He doesn't bring us. And I understand he's got politicos around him that think they're taking a safe course, and that's fine. But every time his son sends out some of our stuff or he does, the media attacks. That's because they know it's powerful info that breaks through the conditioning. Trump knows that. But we need Trump to retweet this video. Uh, I, I, I never lobby. I'm going to get on the phone or later. I'm going to call Stephen Bannon the Breitbart, his, his campaign. I'm going to say, hey, listen, you need to put this video out. Because I know, just as sure as the sun came up this morning, and I'm going to do a couple more similar campaign ads, that if these get out, this will absolutely put the final nails in the career of the serial criminal, the kleptocrat, the grifter, that is Hillary Rodham Clinton and the giant, filthy train, like a big shark has all these little fish following it, you know, that feed off of it. This huge train of the Saudi Arabians and the communist Chinese and all the drug dealers and narcotics traffickers and weirdo child molester groups and everything else. I mean, this woman is a freaking demon. That's why everybody's done the analysis of her and knows she wants to start big wars. She's like a demon. She cannot help but go to the flame. They cannot help but go to the flame. They cannot help. I mean, in Russia, she is known as the witch on state-run TV. She is a witch. We'll be right back. I'm Alex Jones. This is the Info War. <laughs> Walker put together one of our great graphics people, uh, that little Halloween intro uh, with uh, really how creepy and scary the Clintons are. And, of course, it was uh, Darren McBreen and Leanne McAdoo that put together the nuclear war emergency report. A vote for Hillary Clinton is a vote for World War III. Uh, this is definitely the most powerful political ad of 2016. And believe me, I would give credit to anybody else that did it. I don't care. Everybody knows that. I'm just saying that so people understand this is the one it's the truth and with the demographics it's one of the only ways to reach liberals that have any basic instincts for survival anymore hillary is a known warmonger the pentagon has warned of this everyone has she is very unstable she admits in wikileaks that her quote instincts are very bad she has a vicious temper i don't mean one that just flares here and there i mean it's it's what drives her it's what controls her and she wants to dominate and absolutely control. Now, here's the huge news, uh, obviously. Maryland Trump supporter, they switched my vote to Hillary. Infowars.com. Clinton insider, rigging only way Hillary can win. Look at this one. Two investigators, Chicago votes cast ballots beyond the grave. That's CBS News. This is happening all over the country. Look at this one. This one's out of Bloomberg. Now, remember, nobody wants illegals to vote. There's no illegals voting. There's no such thing happening. But you can pull up hundreds of articles in the Chicago Tribune, the L.A. Times, you name it, saying we're going to let illegals vote. I mean, you can land off an airplane and not have a visa, anything, and you just get to vote. I mean, imagine if you showed up in Mexico or New Zealand, or I mean, anywhere, and said, Hi, I'm here. I'm here to vote. They're like, What? <laughs> are you a Kiwi citizen, sir? No, but I get to. Why are you racist? They'd be like, uh, You know, boom. It's so outrageous, but only in America under political correctness. So here's the article. I want to show this for TV viewers. This is out of Bloomberg, right here for folks. Some cities, see, this is what London's already saying. We don't care what Brexit does. We've got our Muslim mayor. We're just going to bring people in and issue our own visas here. It's a breakaway. The global is breaking up our country. Some cities want their immigration, uh, their immigrants to vote. They're not illegal immigrants. So look at illegal immigrants voting all over this country. Donald Trump recently claimed in a Fox News interview, part of the ongoing effort to cast doubt on the integrity of the presidential election. I love how they'll take where he's right 
and use it against him. In fact, I always hear it even on uh, local radio and Fox radio. They'll be like, wow, Hillary's destroying Trump. Why she's out raising uh, contributions five to one. And you find out they're all corporate. They're all billionaires. Wow, he, she's really getting his butt kicked. We should be proud of the fact he's not getting any elitist money. But they take his strengths and they turn it into a weakness. So some cities want their immigrants to vote. Then you read the next paragraph. Oh, that Donald Trump claims that illegals are voting. It's happening. We have Democrats, the head of the Democratic Party's vote operation, Kramer, admitting they're engaged in mass fraud. And then his number two saying it. And there's nothing anybody can do to stop us. I could F my mother and get away with it. That's a quote. I could F my mother and get away with it. They're so arrogant now, they dance around Gruber and Ezekiel Emanuel have been back on TV this week laughing at us and saying, we're just going to raise penalties and gouge you more and giggling and snickering and saying it was never going to be free and clicking their heels together like little, little, little flying monkeys or something. I mean, this is getting more and more out of control because it's all a giant con game. They are raping us in front of everyone, and it's funny. And they're all these little soft, smart-ass little nerds just like Joseph Goebbels and the people that served the Nazis, they're always these little chicken neck, smart mouth punks. Dishonorable filth. But, oh, Donald Trump's so wrong, the illegals are voting, and oh, a whole bunch of cities are letting him vote, but he's wrong. He's wrong. We are doing it, and it is happening, but it doesn't exist. There are death penalties. There are these different death boards. You can't keep your doctor and triple your prices, and there is a big fat IRS penalty. The new talking point all over the news is, I don't know what the Republicans and people's problem is. And Donald Trump, I mean, you always had to pay a penalty. And if you're not interfacing with the IRS when you go to sign up you know, for your health care, well, then you've got a serious problem. And that's what it is. It's, it's a compliance system for the IRS to make you interface with the IRS to get your health care. And so you don't get health care if you don't pay the IRS or you're not in their system. And then it goes vice versa. It's a corporate tax to offshore insurance companies and banks. Uh, it allows control over health care and the delivery of it and what type of health care you get. It is a nightmare of control with Swiss cheese in it. Holes everywhere so the establishment is exempt from the damn thing. And, of course, everyone's saying, oh, Hillary's going to have to reform this. Oh, yeah. It was always in the WikiLeaks. We told you long before it was in the WikiLeaks that it was designed to implode because they would go on C-SPAN and write articles and books to their constituents saying this is a screw job. You go to the general public, no, their constituents are the big banks, the intelligentsia, where they all hop around and giggle like Gruber on TV. Thank God everyone's so dumb in America. Thank God they have no attention span. We can really rip them off. It's the same thing. They put out the whole deal. People are like, wow, Alex, you were right again that Hillary wants it to fail to bring in something even worse. How did you know that? You're so smart. I'm so smart. I, I mean, I can't take this anymore. I'm not smart. I've got a memory, though. It's not smart or exceptional to not be an idiot. And to not let people talk down to you and call, they still call me a conspiracy theorist, a badge of honor, by the way, because I say Obamacare is a screw job. I mean, everyone knows it's a screw job, but again, it's the same tactic. This is, this is weaponized media right here, folks. You want it, you're about to read it. Some cities want their immigrants to vote. Look at illegal immigrants voting all over this country, Donald Trump recently claimed, claimed in a Fox News interview. Part of his ongoing effort to cast doubt on the integrity of the presidential elections. There's no evidence to support the Republican nominee's claims of election fraud. Oh, no. And then notice they use a lawyer term. Voter fraud and election fraud are two different things. Generally, election fraud is electronic. Massive evidence of that. It's a historical fact. But there's also organized voter fraud at the precinct and county level. And so that becomes election fraud. So there's three different types. Pure voter fraud, election fraud, and then election fraud through mass organized voter fraud. Just I'll give you some real definitions there. 
But let's continue. Quote, there's no evidence. That, that's right. Oh, there's no. Oh, thank you, Bloomberg. And you don't want our guns either, right? Remember Bloomberg a few years ago wrote an article. He said, I'm the biggest Second Amendment supporter there is. That's the headline. No one believes in it more than me. That's like saying Jeffrey Dahmer, you know, doesn't like to kill people. I mean, it's just they talk to you like you're a moron. Because they're such psychopathic control freaks, they think they can force feed you. And it's all about when will they comply? When will they comply? Just intensify the lies. Just intensify the lies. So some cities want their immigrants to vote. That's outrageous. That's sedition. But they have it there in a headline like it's no big deal. See, it's, it's all an assault on reality. There's no evidence supporting the Republican nominee's claims of election fraud. But some cities are moving to expand voting rights to include non-citizens. Oh, Cities are going to let people vote when it violates federal and state law. But Donald Trump isn't right about it. And it goes on. Non-citizen voting isn't as radical as it might sound. And then it just goes on of how good it is and how nice it is and how fun it is. And, and it just goes on and on and on and on. And, oh, we've brought all these people in, so now they deserve a say and blah, blah, blah. So there you go. They know they've got readers that have been turned against Trump, so they bring them into the next phase of tyranny by going, Trump is evil, and this doesn't exist, but it does exist, and Trump doesn't like it, and you're now part of our club. I mean, this is mind control, people. This is mind control. So that's just one of the articles. So, Maryland Trump supporter, they switched my vote. There's video, Infowars.com. Yet another report of vote flipping. Uh, John Bowne had a report at the start of the show where they had the election official certify that it was flipping votes across their systems. I mean, we have it on the Texas letterhead, but CNN says there's no truth to it. It's another wild conspiracy theory. But the good news is CNN has almost no credibility, but that's the crazy part is they just keep moving forward with the fraud. So another two investigators, Chicago vote cast ballots from beyond the grave. A vote for Hillary is a vote for World War III. I mentioned that's very, very important. Don't forget this one. WikiLeaks email. Hillary campaign struggles to reach effing dumb young people. Yeah, they're so dumb they don't like your Obamacare. I also want to get into Clinton and Michelle Obama make their first joint campaign and talk about the horrible misogyny of Donald Trump while they have the dirtiest arrested development dumbass thugs well, they're not dumbass thugs. I mean, a lot of them are real thugs, but they're also just predators. They're pimping everybody. Up there singing about date raping women. These are songs on the list sung at the White House while Michelle's daughters shake their asses. So she pimps her daughters out literally to big, fat, demonic pig monsters who are all about using everyone and being basically satanic, all about being about themselves and me, 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 and all this crap is the reason you have nothing. Because the White House is full of a bunch of trash. I got to say it, though. The Clintons are even trashier than the Obamas. They are the trashiest of the trash, just trash upon trash. So we're going to be getting to all that. But since I mentioned Gruber, here's a mashup of Gruber. And of course, we have the latest clips where he just smiles and yells and says, get used to it. <laughs> get used to it. We're just going up to the, up the penalties. Remember, there are no penalties. Every news channel, it's crazy. It's a conspiracy. You're a racist. It was in the bill. They don't care. They passed it. And now they sit there and giggle because they're the Ivy League white shoe boys and laugh at you and your family while they try to shut the economy down to consolidate it in their own words. So here's Gruber laughing at you. Who exactly is Gruber? What was his role in crafting Obamacare? I don't know who he is. He didn't help write our bill. Most people think he's one of the best outside experts, Mr. Gruber of MIT. I don't know if you have seen Jonathan Gruber of MIT's analysis. And so... Jonathan Gruber is one of the most respected economists in the world. He attended five of the 12 meetings at the Obama White House in 2009, including the meeting with the president. I was a paid consultant to the Obama administration to help develop the technical details of the bill. Six million dollars in consulting fees on Obamacare. Who knew you could make so much money working for the government, huh? And so... The, the fact that some advisor... An advisor. An advisor. Who never worked on our staff. I've stolen ideas from liberally 
John Gruber. Obama was a little more relaxed. I think he took a cigarette break halfway through. Uh, expressed an opinion that uh, I completely disagree with, with uh, in terms of the voters. That passed. The American voters are stupid enough to say that it's, you know, called the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. It's a very clever, you know, basic exploitation of the of the of the lack of economic understanding of the American voter. There's no reflection on the actual process that was run. And the only way we could take it on was first by mislabeling it. And John Kerry said, no, 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 we're going to tax your health insurance. We're going to tax those evil insurance companies. Gruber, who has been our guide on a lot of this. But we all know it's really a tax on people who hold those insurance plans. I think it'll, it's fair to say that there was not a, a provision in the health care law that was not extensively debated. The, this bill was written in a tortured way to make sure CBO did not score the mandate as taxes. If CBO scored the mandate as taxes, the bill dies. Mr. Gruber of MIT, he's got big computer models, he takes the CBO data, and frankly, in some respect, he's helped CBO by help giving some information to CBO that otherwise does not have. You had a law which said healthy people are going to pay in, it made explicit the healthy will pay in and sick people get money, it would not have passed. Uh, and was fully transparent. Lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And over time, it's applied to more and more health insurance claims. And so... How can that make sense? Gruber Gate. And of course, he's now back on TV laughing and giggling and saying, we're going to raise your premiums even more and your fines. But the final lie, even on C-SPAN to his own minions, teaching him how to lie, teaching him how to deceive, teaching him how to engage in fraud and get paid you know, $6 million uh, for doing it, is that he keeps saying, so that sick people get health care. The sick people had charity care. They always did under state and federal law. Now they're getting rid of that, and the standard of care is going down. That's a fact. Doctors are quitting in mass. We have the emails. It's meant to bankrupt the system. So the final lie is, oh, we're lying to the public for the greater good to help poor people. That's just another lie to get the minions in academia and in finance and in the system to go, okay, I'll do bad things for a greater good. And then in most cases, you're screwing yourself. That's the big fraud. We're going to go to break and come back with the actual video of the vote flipping happening in Texas and other states. Uh, just, it, I mean, they're saying illegals are voting all over the country. Cities are just letting people do it. But it doesn't exist. I mean, this is Heaven's Gate, hail bop level, cuckoo cocoa puff level. And then I'm sitting here pointing this out, and they just keep saying I'm crazy. Well, you know what? You're crazy if you listen to these liars when you can read the methodology of the polls, and, and, and they're all nine points or more added to Hillary via sampling of Democrats. I mean, that's not a conspiracy theory. That's mathematics. That's critical thinking. And the cons just keep telling you, no, 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 you can't have it that way. Before we go to break, ladies and gentlemen, we're ending this special at the end of the weekend. It's an amazing nootropic, so good for your brain. I absolutely love it. Much of this crew takes it. It's Brain Force, available at InfoWarsLife.com. That's one word, InfoWarsLife.com, 25% off Brain Force. And, of course, we have the even bigger special, 30 to 40%. 30% is the lowest uh, discount, 40 is the biggest. On all the super high-quality storable foods, at InfoWarsStore.com. It's powered by My Patriot Supply, the best folks out there. We have their full catalog as well. This is the exact same food, packed at the exact same time, but I can get around it contractually with private labeling and do these uh, sales occasionally. This is as best of sales we ever do, upwards of 40%. InfoWarsStore.com. InfoWarsStore.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. We have new national polls out. Public faith in elections falls to all-time lows from the Mises Institute. We have Putin mocks Clinton claim of Russian election meddling. Is the U.S. a banana republic? Meanwhile, they're bringing in the EU and UN to oversee our elections. Oh, foreigners are running things. Bring in the UN. Everything they accuse Russia of, they're doing. Everything they accuse the patriots of or, or, or Trump, they're doing. But more and more, everywhere CNN goes, the crowds are calling them out. Their, their guests are calling them out. That they're the Clinton News Network, that they're despicable. So the good news is they can try to sit there and stonewall and say, we don't know what's going on. The truth is coming out. Now, the Democrats, back in 2008, 
ran a voting machine, uh, you know, uh, comedy piece via The Simpsons, where they're trying to vote for Obama, but they keep getting McCain over and over again. This vote flipping was known to be carried out by both parties. And it's been certified. There's been congressional investigations. They just know the general public doesn't look into stuff like that. Hell, they could tell the public Congress is a conspiracy theory and it doesn't exist and people would buy it, at least 30%. I mean, I'm not kidding at this point. They're now demonizing the word mother and father, okay? They mean business, folks. They are taking over reality. We're in a total war. And so, so here they are saying it's a big problem on The Simpsons, but now no one ever heard of it as state election officials are saying, we've certified in Texas and other states, they're flipping. And they sort of fight in Illinois and Colorado and everywhere else that illegals are voting and dead people are voting. And they're trying to get illegals to, to be able to vote. I mean, we're going to get illegals to vote, but it doesn't exist. Trump's completely insane saying illegals are voting, but we're in, we are having them vote, though. Do, 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 Same article. Just read it. Again, they're assaulting your reason. You're like, this discredits them. They just want to keep programming you with this. It's a psychological warfare tactic to basically just create mass mental illness and think they've got our kids in the schools, folks. So you're an adult. You can barely, you know, decipher it. It's the same here with me. It's crazy. Garbage in, garbage out. But imagine your kids. So here's the Homer Simpson piece. So there they are. But now it doesn't exist. But here's some video voting machine caught on camera casting ballot for Democrat when selecting Republican in Texas. This is from today's news. Here it is. This is what it's doing. And 16 states, I think 16 percent, 16 states are basically run on George Soros owned machines. And he's got connections to several of the other big companies. But it's OK to have a weirdo Nazi collaborator running our voting. So basically, the Democrats have gone pure criminal with the Republican leadership against the American people. They've just dropped any pretense. They are absolutely against us. They are in a war. And the WikiLeaks admits they're in a war against you. It's a scorched earth policy. You've got all these yuppies and people that have two or three degrees, no future. All they're told is be part of totalitarianism. Learn to lie to the public. Gruber gives seminars on it. We're going to rob everybody. And so they're like, okay, I'm ready to rob. And they actually get off on the criminal activity. And, and they're very sophisticated folks. They wear trendy clothes. They look completely nice and normal, but they are scientific. And let me tell you, even the mid-level, you've seen the behind the scenes videos. These are military operations. I mean, these corporations even have people broken down and sometimes under military titles. I mean, they are bringing us down. This is 21st century warfare. We're under attack, mayday worldwide. Mayday, mayday, mayday. For God's sakes, awaken. We'll be back with hour two. You know, I love how Project Veritas actually gets the undercover video that mirrors what the WikiLeaks show, and Hillary doesn't even deny these are real. They've got data dump, whatever it is today, with new incredible revelations coming out. But look at DrudgeReport.com. Talk about in real time as we're breaking all this down, Drudge is, you know, on top of it, and even finding stuff we didn't find. Cities push for illegals to vote. We were covering that. That's Bloomberg, how great it is. Dead cast ballots in Chicago. From the grave in Philly, vote flipping Maryland, election fraud Florida, fake registration Virginia. And this is all documented. And that's just the last hour's news. The problem is there's literally, I don't exaggerate, a hundred or more articles a day with election officials, you name it, certifying that all over the country they're flipping to Hillary. By the way, I'm not somebody that's hype driven. Everybody knows that. I really go with what the truth is. I almost said this a few weeks ago, but I didn't because I, it, it wasn't overwhelming. It is now overwhelming. I have Democrats, because Austin's mainly a Democrat city, come up and apologize, whisper to me that they're really supporting Trump. They understand what's happening. They're scared she's going to start a war. They understand she's part of the mafia, on and on and on, and that all the Democrats they know are actually voting for Trump. And then I hear that on talk radio. I see it all over. Uh, my parents' friends, I'd say 70% of them, are liberals, and they're nice people. They're old-fashioned liberals, you know. They're all for Trump. I mean, they're just like, cannot stand Hillary. And I just started really thinking and talking to other folks around the country. I was talking to Daria, whose parents live in New York. They say everybody's for Trump. They don't know anyone that's for, for Hillary. Unless you go to the richest neighborhoods, and then that's it. I mean, it's just, it's so elitist. And I'm not against the wealthy, but she's starting a class war 
She's part of the crony elite that don't want a free market. And then they've got the nerve to badmouth money all day when these are pigs that steal the money from the Haitians. And it's time for all the black organizations and others, I mean, after the robbery of Haiti of billions, to go public, to go public uh, against uh, Hillary. I mean, there's never been a clearer choice here, ladies and gentlemen. Never. It, it's so incredibly clear. I don't even know what to say at this point. But continuing, eight points vanish in four days, even in her staged polls. 70% of her supporters want Obama. That's right, they don't want her. AI predicts Trump win. I, you know, I should have pointed that out. That That's what I keep breaking down for everybody. That's out of CNBC. It's the Google bots. It's the big corporate bots. It's, 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 it's what's in the subscription business journals that are all on board for centralized government and want Hillary because they've already got the system rigged. But they admit, oh, my God, we've got to fight hard. Trump is going to have a tsunami. Ladies and gentlemen, if you go to Google searches alone, on average, Trump's got 20 plus times the searchability of, 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 of Hillary. And then you look at the positive metrics, it's 10 times or more. I mean, this really spells gargantuan tsunami insane asylum level victory for Trump. And they've got everybody convinced with oversampling that he's in a dead heat with her. So they can try to steal this thing. And they want Trump to sit there like Bernie Sanders did and just accept them stealing the nomination. He didn't do it. Trump knows he's got to fight. He knows this is coming. It's in the WikiLeaks. They're going to rig the election. We have them. We have them in the WikiLeaks. We have them on the polls. We have them on the ground. We have their national directors from every freaking angle, man. Open and shut. There isn't a jury in the world wouldn't lock their asses up if we had real prosecutors in this country that weren't political hacks. And I understand that they're controlled by people on top. A lot of them are not bad people. That's why we're seeing all these leaks. The leaks are not from the Russians. I mean, uh, some of them have been, a very small percentage. The Russians, when they leak something, admit it. Like ClimateGate. They, okay, thank God we learned the UN was over over a thousand universities hiding the decline and you know fixing the numbers to get, to get carbon taxes. Thank you, Russia. Russia doesn't want a bunch of carbon taxes. They're about to collapse just like we are. So, yeah, they did that. All this other stuff, just like William Benny told you six months ago, it's coming from U.S. intelligence agencies that have some shred of sanity left in their minds. All right, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. The big AI systems show whopping victory for Trump. It doesn't matter what the freaking legal and ethics people say. We're, we need to win this mother Hillary, like, is aware of all the work that you guys do, I hope. The campaign is fully damaged. And then they tell Hillary, like, what's going on. Well, I mean, Hillary knows through the chain of command. Yeah. I'm not suggesting we wait around. We need to start this right away. Okay. On every one of these fronts. Okay. What well, I call this conflict engagement. Mm -hmm. That's that's your that's your version of reenfranchisement. Conflict engagement in, in the lines at Trump rallies. No. We're starting anarchy here. This is part one of our undercover investigation into the dark, backroom dealings of the Hillary Clinton presidential campaign. The culmination of a year-long investigation infiltrating the machine from the bottom all the way to the White House. There are concerns this election will be rigged. What you're about to see will make you uncomfortable and angry. It's graphic, uncensored, and disturbing. Our attorneys say there is strong evidence of criminality, and this is just part one. A lot of reunion guys. Don't do that. Oh yeah. What do you want? Yeah. They're rock and roll. So I'm uh, basically deputy rapid response director for the DNC for all things Trump oh. on the ground. Nobody's really supposed to know about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying we have mentally ill people. Mm. We pay. Do <laughs> Make no mistake. This guy named Caesar Vargas. Is his name? I got a priest to cry on camera once. You know, Brad and Bob and Lux and myself are all part of the old school method where it doesn't matter what the freaking legal and ethics people say. We need to win this mother um, So Bob is really good friends with him mm -hmm. and talked to him this afternoon. And they are all in. If we can get 25 grand, they're all in. 
There is a narrative that supporters at Trump rallies are violent and dangerous, looking to beat up protesters who don't agree with them. But our undercover investigation into the Hillary Clinton Democratic Party machine reveals a very different story. If you're there and you're protesting and you do these actions, mm -hmm. you will be attacked at Trump rallies. That's what we know. Oh, so, oh, oh, so that's part of the process that's, of, of eliciting the reaction. The whole point okay. of it is we know that Trump's people will, will freak the f out, the security team will freak out, and his supporters will lose their shit. This is Scott Fogel. He is the National Field Director for Americans United for Change. He used to work for People for the American Way, an organization funded by George Soros. He also has his own company called the Foval Group. He is one of the dark operatives for the Clinton campaign. It doesn't matter what the freaking. Now, the reason I wanted to start this hour with that information is a uh, fellow has visited me here in Austin. I've been on his station for, for many years. He's a general manager there. Uh, Matt Dubiel's you know, a, a, a father, a patriot. His videos went the most viral, tens of millions of views total. That's not even counting when they aired on CNN, Fox, you name it. When he was there with his family and was just trying to go see Trump and saw police being beat up, citizens being attacked, Trump supporters being beaten, women being beaten up by men. I mean, imagine if Trump people did this and he got a lot of the different videos inside and outside. Now, remember, back when this happened, uh, back in March, six months ago or more, the media said Trump people were attacking Sanders folks. But we later had our Chicago Police Department source, days after I talked to Matt, confirm this. Stone had another source confirming it, that they had moveon.org buses. It's now come out in the WikiLeaks and other documents, uh, as well as what Project Veritas got, coming in dressed up like S Sanders supporters. They were hiring mentally ill people, drug addicts giving them sometimes $1,200 a day, but they had to go get in a fight. A couple hundred bucks, Jack Daniels, vodka, drugs. This is all, this is all come out. But you got to go knock somebody upside the head. And the bird dogging is you go up and you hit them below in a crowd so people don't see what's happening. And I've had anarchists do this to me, communists do it. They'll come up and hit you in the back and then wait for you to turn around and knock them upside the head so they can get you arrested. So this is how they operate, ladies and gentlemen, and I've dealt with it so many times. I've had these people hit me in the ribs, and I know full well I'm getting set up, or they, you know, scream, kill Michelle Malkin, and then, try, and then I wasn't saying it, and then say I was saying it. I mean, they're very sophisticated. Thank God we had video that I wasn't the one saying it, though, so that big national attack piece fell apart. But I've had them try this on me at least five times, setting me up in crowds. Okay, so the good news is the police, they're not perfect, nobody is, but they're on to these scams. Uh, so we're going to go to uh, Matt Dubiel till about 45 after because I want to set this up, though. We're going to be here in a few minutes. Uh, he's a vice president and general manager of WCKG Radio in Chicago, 1530. And most recently, he made, again, national headlines on Drudge, Fox and Friends, Inside Edition, CNN, for his criticism of the TSA screening of his three-year-old son. And then, of course, uh, uh, more recently, uh, with the whole situation at the Trump rally in Chicago, which was the beginning of our investigation. But what's amazing is everything he said has now come true. And here's Donald Trump in the last debate calling Hillary out for it. Uh, those people, I don't know those people. I have a feeling how they came. I believe it was her campaign that did it. Just like if you look at what came out today on the clips where I was wondering what happened with my rally in Chicago and other rallies where we had such violence. She's the one in Obama that caused the violence. They hired people, they paid them $1,500, and they're on tape saying, be violent, cause fights, do bad things. There you go. And he goes on to point out what she's doing is criminal. Now, the reason I wanted to play that is this is a big national issue now, one of the chief issues of the dirtiness of that rat Hillary. Now, here's Matt, right after it happened, breaking down the evidence that it was moveon.org, George Soros, Hillary, and the whole setup, now proven completely accurate. Folks, we're like accurate 99% of the time. It's, it's ridiculous how on target we are. That's why major intelligence agencies around the world listen, not just the U.S. government. That's why people all over the planet listen to InfoWars, because we've done the research. And it's important that we point that out, because this broadcast has the talking points and the information that will bring these people down. So here's Matt back in March right after the stage riots. This is what they're not really talking about at that event. It was a peaceful event until the moment when they announced that it was canceled or postponed for safety concerns. And then you saw all the people that were in the crowd that were 
uh, virtually sleeper cells. And I don't want to use that term because I know that they were. No, that's what it is. They're hired by George Soros. He's taking credit. Uh, Hillary, and they're blaming Sanders. It's incredible. They paid him to do it. They're under orders. They're mercenaries. Uh, and they go in and they do this. And as soon as they knew that happened, okay, now we're not going to disrupt Trump. Uh, now we're going to activate because our threats work to shut it down. And now we're going to cause a melee so they can run headlines saying the most dangerous place to be in the world yeah. is a Trump rally for a chilling effect. It okay, so going to Matt Dubiel of WCKG.com, 1530 a.m. there in Chicago. The reason this is important is they tried to cover it up. It's all come out and it's all over mainstream news today that Hillary has failed, and the media has failed. They're all very down on themselves to suppress the emails, and it's really hurting Hillary. So isn't that just terrible that they've failed in their criminal conspiracy against the American people? Uh, Matt, great to have you on with us. Alex, thanks for having me. I, I, I want to really express some gratitude for, for what you do and for InfoWars, because without you, and I, I'm not, I, I mean this from, from my heart, Without you and without these stories being told, I cannot imagine what kind of election this would be. I cannot imagine what kind of country we would be where the lies are allowed to go on and the bullies are allowed to keep on bullying. I mean, imagine the Project Veritas videos. I didn't know about them until your organization, InfoWars, started talking about them. And because you started talking about them, we started talking about them. And because of that, my, my cell phone's blowing up because I used to work with, with the guy on the video. And then I'm going, oh my gosh, look at, look at all these pieces we put together. And then you see presidential candidate Donald Trump, who I gotta say, on the debate when he was very presidential because if it were me on the debate stage having personally been in chicago and seen the evil that rooted itself and i will call them sleeper cells now because those people and the people behind this are terrorists they should be brought up on domestic terrorism charges because oh, they're involved they're in racketeering doing. to suppress our free speech it's criminal it is deplorable and it's it's disgusting, frankly. And I, I can't believe that Trump handled himself the way he did. Because oh, he, he just gets out. more presidential as he goes. But just to expand on that, with Drudge and Veritas and all of us in local stations feeding the intel in, that's why we're giving them a major run for their money. And they're seriously panicking. Uh, I totally agree with you. But the fact that we're bringing this back up and, and Obamacare back up just is more of the greatest lies, the greatest hits they've been involved in. The truth, it, this is the beauty of freedom of speech. This is why you let people talk. This is why you let people speak, let people speak their mind, because smart people will figure out what is garbage and what is real. You don't want to suppress opposing ideas. You want to let them talk, because the more you let them talk, the more criminals will be seen for the criminals they are, and, and, and shady people will be you know, found I'm glad out. you say that, because we invite socialists, globalists, liberals on all the time, 99 times out of 100, I mean, literally, uh, maybe one out of 200 times will they come on. They will not defend themselves because they're all following talking points. I've seen a thousand articles the last week attacking me, over a thousand. They all are the same talking points in the same order with someone else's name on it. I mean, this is incredible. They don't have earpieces. So if they had an earpiece, perhaps they would be willing to do it. Uh, that's why Trump, that's why audiences respond to Trump because he's able to talk to them. Now, listen, the guy's not perfect. We, we have to watch him who you, you always have to watch the watchers. You can't trust anything. This idea that we're waiting for a hero and that Superman is going to fly in on his cape and run the country and bring us to victory is what got us into this mess with. No, you're absolutely right. And, the and last eight years. But, but we know with Hillary, she's pure certified evil. Yes. You, it, it, somebody put it really great to me uh, a, a few weeks ago. They said, all right, behind, and maybe somebody on your show, they said, there's two doors. And behind one of the doors is a man-eating bear. And behind the other door might be a man-eating bear, might be a teddy bear, might be who knows. You know which, what's behind door number one. At least you got a chance with what's behind door number two. And then, by the way, it's up to you, it's up to me, it's up to every single American person to make sure that the Constitution is upheld and protected. It's our and, job. And we're bringing all that back. And exactly, the globalists are already behind the scenes. They know it's in door number two. They know he's a populist. They know he's a patriot. They know he sees himself as an underdog. He, he really wants to empower this country. Now, he might be manipulated. He is very pig-headed. It's why they hate him. He will take basically almost no one's advice. Uh, strangely enough, unless you just really straight shoot him. 
<laughs> the media can't stand the fact that Trump actually listens to me because nobody else seems to. But, I mean, it's just crazy uh, to, to be in this day and age and to know for a fact Trump is real. But you're right. He's a man like anybody else. We can't put everything in him. We've got to just use him as a figurehead to try to bring the republic back. And just because you like something doesn't mean you have to be against something else. If you're going to be against something else, be against lying. Be against corruption. Be against uh, dissolving the Constitution. Those are the things that I think that we can all agree on together that are not worthy endeavors. And then we can unite against those things. But just because you're going, you know, uh, there's people here, there, there's so many closet Trump fans. It's going to be a very interesting uh, election in a few days here because there are so many people that are just waiting in the weeds and not saying what they're doing. And, and, and you look around and you talk to the cab drivers and you talk to the working people of the country. Whether, no matter that was my next question. Matt Dubiel, uh, station manager there at the WCKG.com, 1530 AM in Chicago. I was going to say this a few weeks ago because it was already there, but it got so over the top now that I can tell you, I have Democrats running up to me, black, white, Hispanic, old, young, you name it, uh, you know, waiters at restaurants, cab drivers stopping and seeing me, people at grocery stores, uh, of all walks of life going, they really are set up against Trump. Hillary really does work for the mob. She really does want war. I, and, and I ask him, I go, do your other Democrat friends feel the same? They go, absolutely. I don't know anybody that isn't voting for Trump. And then you're like, oh, my gosh, no wonder they're having to add 9, 10, 20, 30, 40 points oversampling of Democrats to claim she's in the lead. And even with all that oversampling, he's now in the lead in most battleground states. So what is your you're a smart guy? What does your gut tell you is coming? And and what is it they're going to pull? We got 10 days left here. I, I've been overcome with a sense of peace about this. I've been really bottled up and really pent up about this whole thing for, for a little while and really quiet. And, wow. and just this week, I, I got overwhelmed with a sense of peace about Let it. me just stop you. I got to interrupt. This is, we, we did not talk before you came on, did we? No. I, I, I said this on the show earlier this week. I have been so bottled up. I couldn't sleep so upset like I wasn't doing enough. And it's the craziest thing. On Monday, driving into work, this peace hit me. And yeah. I have just been so much more at peace. It's crazy. It's like I felt America come back from the dead or Monday. I don't, I, it's, 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 are you saying you felt that? That's exactly what that's exactly what I'm feeling, exactly how I feel. And it, it's uh, it's a very calming feeling. And uh, th that doesn't mean that I want to. Uh, it, it's it's a feeling of, you know, there's there's people by me that don't want to put yard signs up. I don't care if I have a yard sign or before I would be like, no way, we're not putting a Trump sign in our yard or we're not doing this. We're not doing that. I have this feeling like um, it's it's OK. Things are going to be OK. And, and I believe that the people that you see at these rallies, these Trump rallies, these, these thousands of Americans, my parents, baby boomers, baby boomers and their parents. My grandmother is 98 years old. She will tell you until you'll stop listening how Donald Trump is going to be the next president. Now, there is a little bit of danger in that because, again, we don't want to get into the same situation where, you know, oh, the president is Superman with the cape standing above us all and, and uh, in, impervious to, to judgment and, and being held accountable. We have to hold our leaders accountable. However, I do feel that there is th that everything is going to work out. I do believe that America is on the upswing, uh, e even when you hear a guy like Michael Moore who I don't ever want to hear. I don't ever want to see. But I watched that clip and I thought, yeah, uh, Michael Moore is telling the story about Trump taking on uh, Ford. And for those that haven't heard it, let's try to cue that up for the next segment. And I analyze what he did. He gives like a five minute speech and he admits that we've been screwed over by globalists. Both parties have done it. Now both parties are against Trump. People see it. They want to send a big FU signal. That's his quote to them. That's how he baits you in the beginning of the film and the trailers and promos, because he knows Trump's like 70% now. He just wants to make money. Then he baits you in the second half of the movie, endorses Hillary and gives some pseudo-intellectual garbage. But the fact that he still has to act like he's with the populist and with Flint, because you know, that's his whole identity, shows this crisis of conscience they're having. It's, it's, it's one of those things where I just, I think that uh, a lot of people have had it and they, they laid silent. They didn't vote the last election. They didn't think their vote, had ma vote mattered in the last election. It's not cool. It's not hip 
to be, I tell you what, you bring up Trump at one of my kids' schools, and in certain areas, boy, you're like a leper. You, you can't even talk about the guy. And for that reason, a lot of people will not discuss it. But what happens when people go out and actually punch their ticket and vote, which everybody gets to do here, and some people more than often than they should, unfortunately, uh, that's where I think the tide is going to turn. And either way, I think that it's going to be a landslide victory. I think that it's going to be a, a really empowering and inspiring. But even if it isn't, I'm, I'm, I have this feeling of peace about it because that's what's going to lead to the next uh, there you step. go even if they steal it which i believe trump's gonna win uh, and they're gonna have to steal it it's the animating contest of liberty it's like we're learning to lift you know weights again or jog we're getting stronger as we move forward and trump is exposing the globalist the inside deals this is irrevocable damage he's causing that's why there's no corporate money that's why all the internal republican emails say we've got to stop him and let's get paul ryan's you know a family member, a Supreme Court justice, you know, Hillary wants him to have that. It's revealing the whole sordid mess. And the more they try to twist things to stay in power, the more they burn themselves down in self-immolation. So I don't put a good face on things. I'm always accused of being the fear monger. I wasn't fear mongering. I was saying what was really going on to get the giant awake, to get him out of bed. And Let's now it's happening. Because what the fear-mongering is, is the crap that they're pulling off at these rallies. What the fear-mongering is, is then the storytelling about who is doing the, the deed at the Chicago rally. Oh, these Trump people are terrible. Oh, they're idiots. Oh, they're inbred. They're this. They're rednecks. They're that. No, they're not. They're really great American people. I saw veterans. I saw people with their kids. And let me tell you, Alex, I almost brought my kids to that rally in Chicago. My wife and I went. And when I found out, what was happening, I was scared witless. And well, let me expand on out, this. I physically, as a father, if I tried to go to a mainline political rally and there were thugs hired by Hillary to try to beat me and my kids up, it, I'm not looking for trouble. I'm no. one of these guys that shoots his mouth off. But, I mean, you start flipping some switches here that don't get flipped back. These people are the enemy, and that's why we knew. You notice the police canceled the rally, and that's the intel we got. They knew they were sending over 1,000 people to cause a riot. The police had to cancel because they knew they were planning to have a stampede. You name yeah. it. This is the criminal activity. And then they attack the police, and Democrats are on TV saying, oh, we love them bleeding and all this crap. They're trying to cause a civil war when they're the corrupt establishment. I mean, yeah. it is so ridiculous. Thank God for those Chicago cops. You know, the, the, the cops are getting a bad rap because of certain areas in Chicago and, and a murder rate in a gangland area. Those cops saved countless people that night. When we left, when my wife and I left, we, we bugged the heck out of there so fast it made your head spin. But when we left, they were smashing cars. These thugs, these kids that they paid to go in there to tear the joint up were smashing people's cars with bricks. They were, uh, they, one cop was bloodied up. It was a melee, and they took that area over. And then they blamed it on somebody else, the Bernie supporters, and all the while, and I forget the organization that, was, uh, that had the Craigslist ads that I found after the event where they, they showed that they were hiring. You know, they had job uh, ads that were out saying, hey, we're going to pay you 15 bucks to, to infiltrate this event and, and do damage. And then they treated the, one of the community organizers that was at the event instigating as though he was some local hero. And, and made it a Black Lives Matter thing and, and, and twisted it and turned it. And then to come to find out that it's all orchestrated. It's like what, what you thought was true was true. What you thought was true was true. What I thought was true turned out to we be We now the have truth. the WikiLeaks, like, the documents, and, and, and let's explain. You demonize black people in general by going out and racistly hiring black people to go attack. That's what they did. You demonize Sanders people by blaming it on them, and then you also blame it on Trump, who's left out? Hillary and the Chicago mob. That's where she comes from, it's what her dad did. I mean, this is how you manage all the little people, the dumbasses. That's, that's what she calls the new WikiLeaks, her dumb supporters. We'll be right back with Matt Dubiel. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. So we're in that weird flux space where the globalists saw major upheaval coming decades ago. It's in the major Defense Department reports, Ministry of Defense reports out of the UK as well in 2007 when they declassified a lot of it. And they know there's a revolution coming against the worldwide corporate tyranny. And that's even in the Washington Post now. World government's in trouble. We did rip people off. What do we do? More global taxes and this time really redistribute. But that's always the cover for more power and more centralization and more cronyism. 
And along comes Donald Trump riding a wave of nationalism globally. And make no mistake, he's a big wave coming in, but he's only one wave, just like InfoWars is one wave. Or Matt Drudge is another wave. All of you are just as important as we are. Matt Dubiel, the eyes and ears of the people, you know, they're managing a station, doing his own show on 1530 in Chicago, WCKG.com. We're going back to him in just a moment. But I want to open the phones up as well while he's here with us in this hour. Then Roger Stone's popping in about what do you make of all the vote flipping coming in and dead people voting? I mean, CBS, ABC, to their credit, local news is all confirming it with election officials in Illinois and, uh, and in Maryland and in Texas and in Colorado and in uh, Virginia and in Florida and I mean you name it there are so many reports pouring in at vote at infowars.com that's the email vote at infowars.com and if you see fraud or evidence send it to us there and that's where we're getting all these tips from around the country and it makes my head spin to then see mainstream media go, the Russians are hacking everything, the Russians are taking over, it's the worst election ever, the UN's coming in with the EU to oversee our elections, emergency, emergency, Trump's trying to steal it. Meanwhile, there's no such thing as election fraud, it's totally insane if you believe it exists. On and on and on. And then I've got Bloomberg, as I mentioned, going, yes, cities are passing laws for illegals to vote, and yes, they're voting, but what's the big deal? Trump's a fear monger, it doesn't exist. They're doing some weird psychological warfare stuff where they discredit themselves in front of you. It, it's, it's, it's really sophisticated stuff, but I, I don't see it working. Or maybe it's not sophisticated. Maybe it's just the mental illness of con men once they get caught. So just keep trying to run the same scam. We're going back to Matt here in just a moment. Before we go any further, I sell things that I use that I believe in that are high quality. I mean, if I go to Cabela's and find some cook stove I think is great, I say, hey, call this company, buy 2,000 of them, try to get a better price than anybody's got and sell them. Yeah, I mean, that's what I do. Um, there's particular optics I really like. I say, hey, let's pick those up and sell those in the store. Uh, the best water filtration systems, the best non-GMO heirloom seeds, the best nutraceuticals. About a third of what we sell at InfoWarsLife.com is private labeled from some of the biggest organic producers in the country. Some of these formulas are 30 years old, absolute benchmarks, and we'll just discount them 15, 20%, give it a new name, uh, and, and you know sell it that way. High quality, low price, what we believe in. We've got some Rolls Royce products as well that are, again, a third or less what, what competitors are, like the DNA Force. We've got some things that are 9.95 though. 25% off on Brain Force, the amazing nootropic, that ends this weekend. Um, just go check it out for yourself. 30 to 40% off on super high quality storable foods produced right here in America in Utah. We can only do this discount every once in a while, uh, but uh, people are taking advantage of this. 30 to 40% off. If you ever thought about getting storable food with all the war talk and the economy and the rest of it, this is insurance you can eat for 25 years. This is insurance you'll be able to always use. And with inflation, you'll be able to save money in the future eating your investment. So you cannot lose with this. Because on top of it, you're supporting the info war, a 360 win. So make no mistake, we're doing amazing things together. Thank you for your support. We are the tip of the spear. You are at the heart of that. Look at how everything Hillary does turns to pure crap. Look at how all their evil is being brought out into light. Look at how good is beginning to stand up, and it's only beginning. So your financial support of this broadcast and our local stations being a sponsor supporting the local stations, uh, spreading the word. That's just as important as supporting this operation and what we do. But, you know, the network's got its spots. That's great. That doesn't fund our operation. Uh, I fund our operation 70 80% through direct sales. We have some great sponsors as well. But understand, you, you cannot spend money someplace to get better products at better prices to support a better cause. It is a win, 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 win. And even if you don't want to check into high-quality colloidal silver at the lowest price, you're going to find it at the highest quality. Fine. Just spread the links, the videos, the articles. That's what really matters. Your time, your energy is what's really valuable. And we've got this new video out that basically shows the nuclear war that's going to be started. Most experts agree if Hillary Clinton gets in and has her way. She's evil. She wants it. She says she wants it. We have her on tape saying she wants war with Russia. She wants war and all this other garbage. The video's on InfoWars.com. This viral video will have Hillary running scared. It actually has her running scared. And it's up on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com right now. Now listen, 
A lot of folks will say, you put this up at 5 o'clock yesterday. As of showtime, it had a million views. 700,000 on Facebook, another 300,000 or so on our two YouTubes. That isn't enough, okay? I want 20 million views by the end of the weekend. and I, I mean, Because I know this will devastate them. I know this is the most powerful political ad of this cycle. This is what they did against Barry Goldwater, but it was the opposite. The, the warmonger was LBJ. We're actually turning it around at them right now. This is the this is the ad. This is it. This is the 2016 version of the two thousand uh, of the 1964 version. So this is it. Now you want to start your attack run, folks, on the Death Star. This is what you load onto your X-wing. You need to get this out to everybody, and I mean aggressively. I'm begging our stations to air it. I'm begging everyone. I'm begging, I'm begging, I'm begging. Please. I, got, I did another video yesterday that we have time on the plate. I was going to air it now, but I want to continue with our guest. Where it, it, they have rappers that sing to the Obama kids, and Hillary goes, literally saying, I drug women and rape them, and they don't know I had sex with them, and I bitch slap them. These are lyrics. And then this arrogant... Which Hillary and 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 her cohort Michelle get up there on TV and, and shake. I'm so scared when I heard the Trump video and me makes kids listen to it. You're the ones that secretly recorded it and edited it out of context and then ran with it. And you, <laughs> while you're funding radical Muslims to cut women's genitals off everywhere, Hillary stays in the same hotel room with a creepazoid Abedin. Uh, Uma, whose mother is the top pusher of gentle mutilation of women. What the hell? You people have, I, I just, the uh, Matt, that's the thing. Like you said, I, I kind of sat out the last election because I just hold my nose. The Republican Party's horrible. Now they're against Trump. Another certification. Uh, you know, McCain, you know, Obama. I, I, I was so sick of Bush. I wasn't for Obama, but I just kind of hung back. Now it's so clear, but the hypocrisy, does the mainstream media know that they're basically killing themselves? I think they must. I think they must. They look at their numbers. They, their ratings are down. Their their web traffic is down. Their their web properties are a fugazi. The the number the number one and number two broadcasting companies are on the verge of of uh, bankruptcy. They're on the verge of being delisted. One of them had to re do a reverse stock split the other uh, last week. Their stock was uh, thirty two cents a share. These companies don't know what they're doing. And what they're doing is instead of Instead of moving forward and going with where things should be going, they're, they're trying to hang on to what they got and fight off. And, and that's exactly what these parties are doing. The Republican Party, the Democrat Party, they're all bullying. And that's really what it is. You, you know, you talked about uh, getting hit in the stomach at events and, and them sending people into the event. That is classic bullying. The bully pretends like they didn't do anything when the teacher comes around or when the authority figure comes around. And then they blame somebody else. And then, all the while, the person that was trying to break up the bullying is the one blamed for being the bully. These, these people here, and, and what people have to realize here is, this is not a thing about being a Democrat or Republican. This, this is, Hillary's a bad, a bad person. She's a, she's a criminal. It is criminal activity. If it were not for Infowars, if it were not for O'Keefe, who, and that's another issue, by the way, is, is when I've, you know, you ask people to share your, your video, which is great. Uh, and, and, and it's really, you know, hits you hard, but you share that stuff and then people come at you and, and some of the comments I'm getting about O'Keefe are, Oh, he's this or, Oh, and I'm not going to repeat it. Cause when you say it, you give it power. I'm not going to well, sure. What you've got is a bunch of followers who pick up on the talking point and then they want to handpick everybody. Here's the deal. O'Keefe, myself, you, we just want to change things. We don't care if we get attacked. Because we know we're doing the right thing. That's called leadership. By the way, since you mentioned Hillary's a criminal, this just broke. Huffington Post. It's going up on Infowars.com. I haven't looked yet, but Drudge always is ahead of us. I'm sure it's on DrudgeReport.com. FBI says it's reopening investigation into Hillary Clinton's private email. And I said this two days ago. It's over, okay? I mean, there's no way the FBI can ignore this or they discredit themselves times 10 what we've already seen. Uh, there's Fox News. Uh, FBI reopens investigation to Clinton email because we have them saying we got to scrub it. We got to cover it up. We have the POTUS involved. We've got a, we've got him lying. Uh, this is hardcore. And, and, we, and we've got him trying to bribe the FBI. Those memos have come out. The FBI released them, not WikiLeaks, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to give them cushy jobs at embassies if they would cover up the classification garbage. This is the beginning of the end. Don't they get it? Criminals and thugs and scum. 
just like Hitler or anybody else, always think they're kicking everybody's ass till they make the good people get up and stand up. And if they think we're savaging them now and tearing their guts out now, we haven't even begun to move. It's like we've started racing. We're just now going off the blocks. We're accelerating. They're slowing down. We're not backing off. We're going to run them over. And, and they have to understand, it's a spiritual issue. We're running you over. I don't care what happens to me. I don't care if you ridicule me. I, I'm not a coward follower like you. Didn't you ever figure it out? I'm going to run over you. We're going to bang heads. You think you're tough? We'll see if you are. I'm ramming my head right through yours. I'm coming. Understand that spirit's rising, and you're going to fail. You don't understand that spirit because you're a bunch of backstabbing, cowardly followers. You don't know what it is to stand up for what's right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I agree. And, and what I want to encourage people regular people to stop doing is this this nitpicking where somebody shares something with you yes fact find yes look up the facts yes yes do all that stuff but this this taking sides with the side that you took sides with before you know this idea that because you were my grandfather is a first generation born uh, american and he was a democrat for 100 if he were around today he would not be voting for Hillary Clinton. And, and he would say, he would have the good sense to say, she's not the right person. Not I'm going to align with her because I've always aligned with Democrats. Not I'm, I'm going to slam O'Keefe because I heard something about some other video that he did. I want people to stop it because what happens is you should be thanking O'Keefe. You should be thanking O'Keefe for doing those videos and Project Veritas for doing those videos, Alex for sharing them and spreading them so that you know about this massive grand scale corruption. You should be thanking WikiLeaks. I saw Sarah Silverman on, somebody retweeted, it might have been Anthony Cumia. He retweeted something about Sarah Silverman, the comedian, a raunchy, uh, despicable comedian. Uh, not even funny. Uh, a lot, like a lot of, of people like her, right? A fake so, feminist she, operative to actually enslave yeah. women. Just like uh, the other one that's always complaining about, oh, don't call me fat, and then she takes pictures of herself and, and says, look at me, look at me, look at me. Well, what about the young, young turds lady when she sits there and calls me fat, when I don't even, and, 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 but then says, anyone that calls anybody fat should be arrested? Yeah, well, it's okay to call you fat because you're a man. We can make fun of white American men all day long. That's, all, that's a whole topic for another time. But uh, Anthony shares this tweet from Sarah Silverman saying, why is WikiLeaks verified on Twitter? Why is it verified? Well, how about this? Being verified on Twitter, number one, is not some stamp of approval. Number two, it's to make sure that you know where the information is. It just means from. that this, the, the certified, I had to send them my driver's license, everything, that means it's actually you, so your identity isn't stolen. Absolutely. And, and we should be thanking WikiLeaks. We should be thanking uh, O'Keefe and Veritas, and we should be checking the checkers. Just well, sure, like what they do is they change the subject and go, one time they said the phones were broken, so he went in a federal building to show that Mary Landry was lying and that her phones weren't broken. Oh, my God, they got him for trespassing. Oh, my gosh, he's a hero. I mean, how many times have I trespassed to get a story? It's what you do. And you follow everybody for a day, and you're going to see, what, what's that book? Like three felonies, they, they commit a day, and they're, you know, they're negligible things. you you got to watch. People make mistakes. Human beings make mistakes. That, that happens. Well, here's the deal. They've been breaking the law at every front, overrunning those of us that have consciences and that really care about what we do for our families, and the gloves are coming off. So, you know, at this point, uh, again, I think the piece that you're talking about that's come over a lot of people is, you can really feel the gloves coming off. And like you said, we're in the right journey. Whatever happens, we're gaining momentum. We're gaining strength. The worm is turning, and the globalists know it. I was, I was, in, uh, I was wearing this shirt. It's one of my favorite shirts, my InfoWars shirt. It's kind of the G.I. Joe InfoWars shirt. I'm sure you still have them. At, because there's a war on for your mind, yes. Yeah, I'm wearing it. In, uh, we did a broadcast last week in Jamaica, and uh, people in Jamaica, Alex, were stopping me. Local Jamaicans, people at the resort, people in the taxi. Uh, I recorded two of them and people in Jamaica. And I said, well, you know, why are you watching InfoWars? Like, what, what, what's it to you? Jamaica is its own, you know, nation. It, it was uh, under the... Well, they were the, prosperous uh, until the globalists took them over. So they know that they know about globalism. They're into it. They're watching every move. They're oh, listen, I'm not bragging watching. because I'm nobody. But I mean, I've, I've been in London a few times last few years. I'll stop at Big Bend or just out on the bridge. And I mean, we've done live streams. It's been on tape where... 60, 70 percent people walking by from all the world are listeners. People from China, people from Germany, people from Russia, people from the UK. I mean, that's what I mean. The mainstream media is, let me ask you this question. They're finally getting that the original 
you know, internet was talk radio because it's open free form. So that's kind of merged and created the format of the new internet TV show that's dominating everything. They've now figured out that one of my reporters, Paul Watson, has conservatively, let's not exaggerate, 15 million views a week of his videos. Sometimes 30, 40, but let's say 15 on average. That's bigger than any CNN show. They're finally getting, because I'm not into the power trip, but they need to know you're the joke. You're the outsider. You're not listening to anymore. You're done. Don't yeah. start World War III trying to hold on to power. I will say this, though, the danger in that is, and look at the people where they closed Vine down uh, this week, or they're closing it down. Oh, I know. Oh, no, I agree. They're coming after everybody. I mean, they've, they've told Matt Drudge. They've told us. They're coming. That's what I'm saying. They're going to have to. That's the perfect storm of totalitarianism, Matt, is that we're kicking their ass. They know it. They're falling apart. They're going to try to hold on to power. What, how do we counter that? Well, uh, you got to support these stations. You got to get shows and, 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 and networks like Alex is on more radio stations. I'll tell you another reason. They're, they're eliminating the broadcast spectrum systematically. So, for instance, the television spectrum this year, I think this year, is going away. Channels 40 through 60 are going away, and then they're going to give them to the, the mainstream uh, you know, networks. Oh, so I know. I know. Listen, all our, all our wireless mics don't even work anymore because they're getting rid of that spectrum. They're just yes. giving it all the big digitals, and, and locals aren't getting it. And then what will happen is analog, there will be no analog. And, and it sounds like, a, you know, like, oh, yeah, of course you care because you own a radio station in Chicago. Let me tell you something. No, no, it's all programmed then, then they can yeah. kill any feed they want. They can kill it all. They can, not only can they kill it, but they can take out certain words. They can take out certain Yeah, let's anything. explain that, people that don't know. Uh, because they can hit one button and have a program enter the Internet that erases my voice off the web in a matter of days. Where, where my algorithm, my voice, is, is, yep. is deleted. So yep. that's yep. why. Save the info. Keep it. Because we think we're starting to win, folks. The empire is going to strike back, and it's not going to be pretty. Matt Dubiel is our guest. Stay with us. Well, the FBI has just come out in the last 30 minutes. It's up on Infowars.com. Don Salazar has written about it. Breaking FBI reopens investigation to Clinton emails because it's so cut and dry illegal on so many fronts because... No exaggeration. Thousands of crimes have been committed with these emails and with the secrets and all the rest of it, the lying to Congress, the lying to the people, uh, the emails saying we've got to cover this up. We've got to clean it up. We've got, oh, my God, the president's been talking on this. We've got Podesta saying who told her she can use this and cut off the classifications. This is insane. We should draw and quarter. That means kill. Whoever told her to do this? Well, it was Hillary. That's how they ran the whole administration in Obama's first four years. Remember, remember the head of the EPA was had, had a fake name and fake server? This is what they all do. Obama has a gnome de plume. Support the broadcast, 25% off on Brain Force running through this weekend. 30 to 40%, at least 30, but it goes up to 40 on the high-quality, storable foods. Now's the time to take advantage of that, InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, and we have a... Uh, Trump is my president red shirt to wear out so folks understand the numbers. Obviously, on Election Day, any red shirt will do, but we have that Trump is my president, uh, the ultimate uh, red shirt at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, going back to Matt Dubiel, uh, of our great Chicago affiliate, uh, we're almost out of time here, and I have the Michael Moore clip. I'll have to get to that in the next segment after you leave us. I got Roger Stone, who's on with us every day with the latest breaking news. Huge election fraud taking place. Do you think the establishment is smart and will back off and realize if they do steal it, it's going to bring them down faster. Because that looks like what's happening right now with the FBI. They wouldn't be doing this if they didn't understand they've got to do something now or lose all credibility. So what I'm saying is, do you think they're going to try to steal it? I mean, it's already going on. But are they that crazy to do it in front of everybody with Trump challenging it? Or will they be smart, let him get in, and then try to sabotage him? I think that they're probably going to, you know, are, the way things are, they're going to, it's going to be a combination of both. But this, this bad, they don't even have to institute election rigging. It happens by people who are inept, uh, processes that are bad. I mean, the, the fact that we have a guy like George Soros that owns a company that makes voting machines, and then he has a stake in other companies' voting machines. It's like, hello, you shouldn't be doing that on either side. And he's always he's been involved in it. He's been involved in these damn things for 30 years. It's ludicrous. The, Fed, the voting problems have been, it's a joke. I mean, the punchline is Chicago. So that's been happening for my entire life. Or the punchline's Texas. Exactly. So what do you make of Obama going, there's no such thing as this? 
Well, that's what I'm saying. The, the, the mere fact that any human being would tell you that there's no such thing as that means that they've got something to hide. The transparent thing to say as the president, as the secretary of state would be like, you know what, we've had some problems and we're going to do everything possible. But they're not. They're saying it doesn't exist because, they're, you know, there's no drones. These but it gets drones. crazier than they say it's a huge problem. Russia's doing it. They say illegals are voting. We're signing them up to vote all over the country, but it doesn't exist. That's in Bloomberg today. They actually say in the same paragraph, we're doing it. But Trump's insane. It doesn't happen. So they're master hypnotists, all of them. They're all master uh, manipulators and linguists. They, they, they take the emotion from one thing and they project it onto something else and say, oh, I'm going to reframe this. This is the bad thing. So, so yes. And Trump does that a little bit, except you'll notice what he does is it's, it's, um, it's not um, – manipulative he'll go and say oh yes you're right that did happen and here's why we're going to fix it it's a it's very different it's it's something everyone needs to watch out for it's by the way one of the reasons those mainstream media outlets are having trouble it's because people have sort of wake woken up to this idea of well wait a minute you're saying that that doesn't happen but i know that happens so how does that work it's all meant to make you feel alone and just buy the scam when they steal the election that's what's happening. It's it's I, I tell you, people have to be your your job isn't just to vote on election day. It's to cast your vote and make sure that it was cast and recorded. Sure, properly. it's a war against the media. It's 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 a huge awakening. WCKG.com, Matt Dubiel, you hear his show as well. It's excellent. Thank you so much, my friend, and great job exposing uh, first off uh, what was happening with the stage riots in Chicago. You've been totally vindicated. God bless you. We'll be back with the third hour. Stay with us. All right. Uh, we've got a bunch of this speech. He just gave it in New Hampshire. Uh, we're going to be coming up with some of that in the uh, next segment because it's, it's been posted at Infowars.com, Donald Trump's statement on the FBI situation. Uh, so all that is coming up. Roger Stone popping in as well. The FBI has come back out and said that it's going to reopen the investigation because of all the new evidence that they lied. It's totally open and shut. I don't even expect them to probably do anything, but they have to act like they are because it's so obvious. But again, we're forcing them to be corrupt out in the open. We're not just rolling over, oh, it's a conspiracy. Just just five months ago, we have Hillary on tape, our reporter, Richard Reeves, saying, what about the report your email server was hacked? It's now admitted it was hacked. And she goes, that's totally untrue, and her people all freak out when they hear InfoWars. And she recoils like a witch from... You know, a big bucket of water. Melting, I'm melting. And then now it's just it's all out there, just over and over and over again. It's it's a very exciting time to be alive because the mainstream media is still somewhat delusional, but as they wake up to the fact that they have no credibility, it is it's quite a bizarre dance they're involved in. Okay, uh, here's here's part of Trump's speech. We'll come back with more of it. A statement on Hillary Clinton uh, and uh, the FBI criminal investigation. I mean, she is dead in the gun sites. Here it is. Yeah, but Donald Trump is speaking. We're going to listen in. All right. Thank you very much. We love New Hampshire, I can tell you that. I need to open with a very critical breaking news announcement. The FBI has just sent a letter to Congress informing them that they have discovered new emails pertaining to the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's investigation. <laughs> You're never going to stop it. <laughs> and they are reopening the case into her criminal and illegal conduct that threatens the security of the United States of America. She's an absolute rat. Hillary 
Clinton's corruption is on a scale we have never seen before. We must not let her take her criminal scheme into the Oval Office. Unbelievable. See, Russia has thrown off the very same oligarchs now in control of us. This is a big deal. For the fact that the FBI and the Department of Justice are now willing to have the courage to right the horrible mistake that they made. We'll be back, folks. Let's, let's, keep, let's pause it. I know it's live right now. We're going to come back with more of this. This is epic. Oh, this is such a time to be alive. Wow. Hide what you have to hide. Tell what you have to tell. And now the FBI has to move. The Justice Department, Loretta Lynch, has to indict Hillary and all of them. Uh, Mr. Mook, the uh, spokesman for Hillary, has just deleted his entire email. We can put that on screen. Uh, he has just uh, deleted his entire Twitter. Now he has w one tweet. Because he's got all those countless tweets that Hillary knew nothing and Hillary didn't know anything and she wasn't talking to Obama on the secret server. I mean, we got him six months ago saying that wasn't happening. So now the MOOC, Robbie MOOC, that's on screen, that's big news. Within 10 minutes, we've confirmed the data stamps with our hacker reporters. That's what they are, they're reporters, not hackers. Uh, that within minutes of the FBI announcement, boom, and we're looking at other Democratic Party operatives. Looks like they're deleting everything right now, too. So you talk about a criminal operation, ladies and gentlemen. They are running for the hills. Trump gave a powerful speech that just ended a few minutes ago. I want to play a few minutes of it. We're getting Roger Stone on the phone right now. Uh, this is uh, him in New Hampshire saying the FBI is reversing itself, being forced to go back after Hillary. Uh, here he is to a crowd that was in rapture. great respect for the fact that the FBI and the Department of Justice are now willing to have the courage to right the horrible mistake that they made. Yeah, enough with Soros. I mean, it's just got to end, okay? Jeez. This was a grave miscarriage of justice that the American people fully understood. And it is everybody's hope that it is about to be corrected. Yeah, she needs to be SWAT teamed right now. And Media Matters and all the rest of you, you've engaged in racketeering, it's clear. <laughs> Leave the country now while so you still that can. That is a big announcement that I heard 10 minutes ago. And I guess, obviously, most of you folks have heard about. And in all fairness, for all of the people that have suffered for doing so much less, including just recently, four-star General James Cartwright, General Petraeus, and many others, perhaps finally justice will be done. All right, more of this. More of this. We've got the whole thing recorded. Just in it a few minutes ago. Uh, when I say edge of my seat, I, in my 42 years on this planet, about to be 43, I've never experienced anything like this. Uh, Roger Stone's been involved in nine campaigns. He's worked in the White House, one on four. Two of them very close to the president, with the president. Reportedly was like best friends with Nixon after the administration. Uh, and he, you know, he said Nixon was corrupt. Nixon did some bad things. But compared to this, I mean, the, the, the guy was an angel. He was actually doing it for American interests. And I'm not saying that's okay. But he really was trying to, you know, serve American interest. Um, with these people, they're out to get the country. We have the WikiLeaks. We have the proof. We have them calling their constituents dumb idiots, calling black people dumb. I mean, it, by the minute it gets crazier. And there's tapes reportedly getting ready to come out of her calling up black people the N-word, okay? We have all these witnesses already. But the word is a couple of days from now you're going to hear that, okay? So the... <laughs> They think they've got stuff on Trump. Oh, give me a break. So he's only with us at the bottom of the hour. I appreciate him joining us basically every day until the election. We're only 10 days out right now. Such incredible things happening. Roger, I wanted to get into all the huge election fraud from Virginia to Florida to Maryland. Vote flipping confirmed on video. Uh, but first off, wow, what do you make of this with the smoking gun 
obviously WikiLeaks that they said we got to cover this up. The president talking to her with a fake name, a numb to plume. I mean, this makes Nixon again look like an angel cake. What are they going to do? Yeah, let's remember Nixon was removed for dirty tricks uh, and uh, other violations of the law during the 1972 re-election campaign run by the infamous committee to re-elect the president where yours truly was the youngest staffer. Uh, and uh, the Clintons are just not being held to the same standard, uh, neither in the monumental dirty tricks that they are perpetrating of inciting violence uh, at the Trump rallies, which Hillary her, Hill Clinton herself approved and pushed. I mean, we have no proof that Nixon ever knew about the break-in at the Watergate. Still unproved. Uh, there's no evidence of it. Jeb Magruder says no his entire life, and then the rat weasel, just before he dies, I think he needs a few money uh, bucks from a tabloid, he flips and says, oh, Nixon did know, which is nonsense. No one else, uh, including John Dean, is, uh, makes that assertion. So uh, this is much more egregious. And what I tell you this means now with the FBI uh, under such heavy pressure, through the citizen revolution in our communications, I think the globalists have decided that the Clinton's baggage is too great. Remember, the Clintons don't run the globalists. The globalists run and fund the Clintons, and they, too, may be expendable. Please continue. You know, you know uh, uh, the... the uh, the interesting thing is that this comes about, Alex, at a time where Donald Trump is clearly uh, picking up the momentum in this race. I mean, look at the, uh, the landscape here, and it's extraordinary. Nevada, a toss-up. Ohio, a toss-up. Florida, new poll out with Trump up four points. Very encouraging, uh, but I think the, if you took all the polls and looked at it, uh, a toss-up. Uh, the, uh, this is also true in uh, New Hampshire, uh, which I think has got to be watched carefully. Maine, a toss-up. Uh, and then uh, who up moves into this, but just this last week, Real Clear Politics brings Pence, put, makes Pennsylvania a toss-up. Now, Alex, let me tell you, the single best field general in the Trump army a guy who was a West Point graduate and one tough veteran, David Urban, probably the toughest political operative, one of the most organized, button-down, focused professionals I've uh, had the honor of working with, uh, deeply uh, once the chief of staff for one of your friends, Alex, Senator Arlen Specter, uh, and uh, an enormously resourceful and combative general, and Pennsylvania, under his command, uh, can come through. Uh, this is a state that eluded Romney, eluded McCain, eluded Bush, the, the junior. Uh, enormous millions of dollars of resources thrown at it, and they've never been able to break the lock. The problem is that the city of Philadelphia will produce an enormous margin for Hillary Clinton. The collar counties outside Philadelphia, which used to be reliably Republican, have moved left. Uh, as as white people have fled the uh, the city, and then more affluent middle class blacks have fled the city, and they move out to the suburbs because it's cleaner and it's safer and the quality of life is greater, they maintain their democratic registration. Central Pennsylvania is as right wing as some parts of Alabama, and then Western Pennsylvania is blue collar, Democrat, uh, Catholic, Eastern European. And Trump has an appeal there that no Republican since Reagan has had. And that is why Pennsylvania, the crown jewel of this campaign, is heads up. Terrific story today, uh, I think it was by ABC, about the, a study done showing that Pennsylvania has more dead people on the voter rolls than any other state, Alex. Now, I, uh, I want to go through these demographics. We've only got 10 minutes left with you. Again, Roger Stone, StoneColdTruth.com, former head of the Trump campaign, here with us. Looking at this, though, going back five minutes ago to what you said, because even before you joined us, that's what I was saying on air. That's the general feeling. The, uh, I mean, the look in Trump's eyes, all of it. The FBI wouldn't have reversed itself if all this new evidence hadn't come out. They've now got to do something. Even in the court of a public opinion, this is devastating. And I agree. 
the power structure now knows it's more damage to put Hillary in. Like we said earlier this week, she's like a dead body going over the finish line. So what do you expect to happen now? Or does she control the apparatus of the party so much that even the globalist won't be able to stop her trying to steal it? I mean, this, 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 is, this is the most epic next 10 days that I can even imagine. This is so edge of my seat. It's like sudden death overtime in a Super Bowl that goes on for 10 days. Well, and it also may be the knife in the back from one uh, Barack Hussein Obama who has no love for these people, who sees that, that Bill is out attacking his signature achievement, which unfortunately appears to be collapsing before our very eyes, Obamacare. Everything the critics having said about it turning out to be true. Uh, but uh, this, let's remember that Loretta Lynch and Comey uh, and everybody who has led the governmental cover-up for Hillary uh, they all report to and answer to the President of the United States. Uh, it is unlikely, I mean, this is clearly a decision that would go all the way to the top. Comey's original decision should not have shocked anybody. He covered up for the Clinton as an assistant attorney general in the Sandy Berger affair, when Berger stuffed national security documents down the front of his pants. They showed that Bill Clinton could have killed bin Laden, and he tried to smuggle them out of the National Archives, and he got busted. Nobody went to jail. Then he covered for them for the Mark Rich pardon when, when uh, uh, Mark Rich, the fugitive financier, and his partner, a guy named Pincus, arranged multi-million dollar contributions to the Clinton Foundation in the closing days of Bill's presidency. Lo and behold, he gets a pardon. So uh, it is it is extraordinary that Trump already had the momentum. This is moving Trump's way. Now this event, which has to be the biggest bombshell of this campaign. I agree. Uh, this just adds accelerant to it. It's like pouring gasoline on a prairie fire. And Trump has lit a fire. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I have, uh, I have uh, as my friend Steve Bannon would say, this is epic. This is epic. So, so. Let's let's as, as the wolf says in Pulp Fiction. Let's not start you know whating yet, and we don't have this in the bag yet. How does the empire strike back? False flags, wars. I mean, if Hillary and her controllers have shown one thing, they are full of psychotic hubris. So what do they pull next? You know, I think in the end it's important to note that the it's the sum total of all this information. James O'Keefe's incredible videos at Project Veritas. The leaks uh, of WikiLeaks, which only weeks ago uh, our critics, Alex, were saying they will amount to nothing. Assange is in retreat. Uh, just what we've seen so far is incredible. The President of the United States knew she was lying about her email. Incredible. Doug Band is talking about how the Clintons can enrich themselves. Uh, that uh, this the greed is a key. Key issue. Sure. So thousands of wounds, one of which should be fatal if we had justice in this country. There's no way to survive it. They have been roasted in the court of public opinion. They have been burned like Count Dracula at high noon. Well, I, no, I, I think that may be a, a little bit of an overstatement. Here's where I think we are, which is the old media is losing power rapidly. The, the new media, mass communications through the Internet, talk radio, and so on, as cable and network. And the, and the mainstream media newspapers are losing their power. The alternative media is gaining power. Where is the tipping point? We know the, uh, the inexorable outcome. Their ratings are dropping like a rock because people don't believe them anymore. The first election in the nine that I've been involved in, in which the voters are totally on to the media, at least 50% of them, and for the first time, they're taking at face value the nasty paid television commercial, which has been, you know, the negative commercial, which has been a staple of American politics and a very, very effective uh, device uh, in moving public opinion uh, through the broadcast and cable media. It is clear that even that is a, a diner store. Sure, well, to be clear, I'm not saying we've Trump. won the war, even this current battle, but clearly the initiative, the awakenings there, and, and, they, and they've suffered so many wounds in the court of public opinion that there's no way to reverse this. I mean, the, uh, it, it's amazing. So they, which means they revert back to plan A, steal it. So this is why uh, we are, we survived a, 
uh, what I guess they, my guys called the a DDSO hack uh, into the uh, website for vote protectors and stop the steal, where we're trying to tweak it to take on this great democratic experiment of conducting a completely neutral, scientifically valid exit poll outside 7,000 key precincts so that we can compare the results with the actual reported results and see if there's any pattern that would show uh, that there was manipulation. I would point out that the U.S. State Department under Hillary Clinton has a standard when the government takes exit polls, which they do, to judge the integrity of foreign elections, the deviance cannot be more than 2%. Sure. Our audience is more about strategy, Roger, as you know. They understand what's going on. The fraud and flipping's coming out everywhere. Trump's done the right thing by pointing it out so he can fight it. If there's massive evidence and you have the exit polls, and, we're, and we already have the videos coming in of vote flipping, what happens on November 9th then? I guess law lawsuits are filed. Well, first of all, we don't know what happens. I would remind you that Richard Nixon won a 49-state landslide in 1972. Roughly 18 months later, they ran him out of town on a rail. The toothpaste is out of the tube on the Clintons. None of these issues will go away. They're not cleansed by her stealing a contested election or even a close election. Do they really think that any any of this will stop? The re the, the prairie fire has been lit. No, that's why I'm saying they're done. They're they're done. I mean, they this are is ultimately, but we but the toughest battles are yet ahead because people with this kind of of, of uh, power and this kind of money and this are going to are going to hold control, out like Hitler in his bunker. Right, they're going to go down hard. You know, but uh, it, the the uh, if you look at any of these outlets like Fox in. And CNN, uh, they now are identical to the networks. Oh, they're towing the line worse than ever. And it's so sad that the media is so controlled that they don't get, they're all destroying their careers following their boss's orders. Me meanwhile, outlets like Newsmax are blocking James O'Keefe. Uh, not, uh, not uh, They've taken down all their archives about the Clintons, the, the extraordinary investigative work they did in the 80s, gone. So they're right behind Fox and becoming, you know, uh, muted, to say the least. Well, that's because they've been told they're bringing in authoritarianism. They're going to shut Drudge, InfoWars, all of us down. They, out of fear, have joined with Sauron, not knowing we're going to kick the Dark Lord's ass. By the way, Alex, I'm glad you raised an interesting point here, and that is Richard Johnson, great reporter with the New York Post, has a story uh, talking about the fact that I will write a book about this election. I actually don't think my NDA uh, that I have with the Trump campaign is enforceable, but it's a moot point because, in all honesty, I would not write a book trashing Donald Trump. He's one uh, of my oldest friends, and he has played a valiant role here. Uh, you know, the credit goes to the man in the arena, not the guy who sits on the sidelines and points out where the strong man could have done better, but the guy who actually gets in there and fought, and he has worked like a demon to overtake the globalists and to win this election. So the idea, uh, and this may just be a miscommunication, that I would write some tell-all. Well, it would be a tell-all on this election. And there will be people who don't like this book, but I, I am not in the business of trashing a friend of 40 years. There's some things he's done great. There's some things that he, I would have done differently. But in those cases, Alex, I bite my tongue. Well, we're 10 days and, out. And, and I think he's going to win. He, he has run it his way, and he is closing in on this fast. I think the, the late momentum is with, is with Trump. Roger Stone, I look forward to speaking to you again, hopefully this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. when I host the broadcast live. What an incredible time to be alive. StoneColdTruth.com. Thank you. Alex, on Sunday, I'm going to give you a special report on Florida, because I really think the Trump campaign is, is on the move. All right. Fantastic news. Thank you, Roger. Great. Thanks, Alex. And I want to explain this. This isn't about a power trip. People need to know the facts here. We are the Trump campaign. Infowars. And the enemy knows that. They don't just say that to try to discredit Trump. They'll take our strengths and act like they're weaknesses, hoping that we desert each other. That's not happened. Trump's not stupid. Trump is riding the wave of populism that Infowars is the heart and blood of. And so, again, that's why I'm saying win, lose, or draw. We're winning. We're engaged. We're fighting.
and you can feel it, you can see it. It's legendary. Stay with us. I'll give the social engineers credit. They have kept people in the dark to a great extent for a long time. They said there's no government corruption, there's no foreign banks, there's no new world order. Don't look at that. But now it's all out in the open, and their credibility is imploding all over the place. Anthony Gucciardi is going to be hosting the fourth hour today. He's going to play some large excerpts of Trump's latest speech in New Hampshire. But at the beginning of the speech, he responded uh, to the latest news that Hillary Clinton and the criminal investigation has been reopened because there's absolute, incontrovertible, open and shut evidence of them absconding to Congress, absconding the courts, absconding the FBI, covering up criminal activities, engaged in racketeering, organized crime practices, uh, covering up crimes. It's all there. It's up on Infowars.com. Breaking FBI reopens investigation into Clinton emails, uh, which is unprecedented. But as Roger Stone said earlier, either way, it is seriously the end for these people. Uh, so let's blow up DrudgeReport.com. I should probably go over some of those headlines for people. In fact, we'll do that in a moment. A bunch of news I haven't gotten to. We should probably open the phones up uh, as well and get your take on where you see this race going and, and, and what you think of all the news of election fraud coming out. What's that new one that's in red? Blockbuster audio? I want to see that. What's that say? It's terrible when they put the internet on screen because then I can't like move it myself. Let me just go look for myself. Audio emerges of Hillary Clinton proposing rigging Palestinian election. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's the New York Observer. Because <laughs> you cannot make it up. We have them rigging the polls, trying to rig this election, trying to get illegals to vote, trying to pass laws, saying illegals are going to vote, and then saying Trump's insane, they're not voting, in the same article. Next level weirdness, man. I don't even know what they're doing. Here's a quote. Oh, my gosh. Can we get the audio, please? I do not think we should have pushed for an election in the Palestinian territories. I think that was a big mistake, said Senator Clinton. And if we're going to push for an election, we should have made sure that we did something to determine what was going to win. <laughs> and, and, look, you know. When I call Bernie supporters, people in their mother's basement that are baristas, that's because the global has set it up that way so you'd be a service person that can never actually control your own destiny. I don't get off on you being poor. They do. I'll openly tell you you've been dumbed down if you're one of those people. I mean, she dresses people up like supporters of, of, of Bernie that has them go attack Trump rallies. It's now confirmed. We told you first. And you just still don't care and you love Hillary. You're a dumbass. You're an idiot. You're a moron. And you don't have a right to take my country and flush it down the toilet because you think it's so horrible as you sit here in a lap of luxury compared to anybody else. Yeah, North Korea and places ain't doing too good. So we have the audio of that. We're going to play that after this because this video is up on Infowars.com. The headline is, this viral video has Hillary Clinton running scared, the wildest campaign ad you'll ever see. And I haven't checked since we started the show. Can, uh, can we go to uh, Facebook and see how many that version has? Uh, again, people would think that I should be happy uh, that, you know, that had 700,000 views this morning and a few other copies on YouTube, of the 300,000 or so. So, yeah, it's a million views. Okay. Less than 24 hours. Okay. Sounds great. I, I, I'm not happy with CNN numbers. Okay. I want 20 million views on this to devastate the enemy. So let's, let's go to our Facebook and see how many. Okay. It's, it's 823,000. Now, see, we've only gone up 123,000 in the last three hours. I mean, and I'm not bitching. I'm not saying you haven't done a great job. I just, this, this is the most powerful campaign ad of the entire season. It's devastating. And it's a campaign to stop nuclear war. It's not even political. And it will reach liberals that still have some shred of sanity. It has the general's warning of World War III. It has the Russians' warning of it. It has Hillary saying she wants it. I mean, it's in her own words. It's powerful. It's 10 times better than their disinfo piece they had in 1964 against Barry Goldwater. This time, though, it's not inverted reality against a great patriot, the grandfather of our whole reawakening of America. I've traced it back to him. You sit there and you look at this, ladies and gentlemen. This is the truth. We've taken the truth back from these lying monsters. It's on Infowars.com. I please send it to your email. Please put it on Facebook. Please put it on Twitter. This is the video Hillary doesn't want you to see. This is the video that's got Hillary supporters waking up. And it's going super viral. So, I mean, it's you know, pretty good. Uh, I don't know. Something's like 30 million, though. It's like 3 million in a day.
It's only gotten you know a million two hundred thousand, I guess now total. Uh, and I'm not complaining, but it needs twenty million. It needs twenty million, twenty million, twenty million, twenty million, twenty million, twenty million, twenty million. I just want everyone to go crazy with this video. Believe me, this is a weapon. Share it. Get it to everybody. Eight hundred and thirty-two, eight hundred and twenty-three thousand views is nothing. I mean, I do videos in my backyard that get like five million views, and I just I go, oh. Why did this video get that? And and then this gold, this this purity, this beauty, this this veritas, this luscious little little jewel, just just is thrown down the cliff to bounce into oblivion. Now, sure, a million views, million two hundred thousand views, uh, if you count all the videos uh, where we've doppelganged it, um, is not chopped liver. But we need to go to the next level. I am I am I am just beside myself right now with happiness. I am uh, very, very happy, though, that uh, humanity is starting to wake up. Good things are happening. The whole con game of the globalists is just falling apart. It's going to be rough ahead, but believe me, believe me, good things are starting to happen, and it's a very exciting time. <sighs> they try to dumb us down. They try to remove us from the land. They try to turn us against each other, and that's always been the lesser scum doing that. We, we, we've had scum over us. That's going to start changing. This is just the beginning. Because we're rediscovering liberty, we're rediscovering what it is to be human. We're rediscovering the value we all have innately just in being good people and seeing the beauty of the night sky and loving our families and doing the right thing. That's the value. That's the wealth in this world. Then we attain wealth to defend that idea and be strong, not because wealth's our God. Wealth is fuel and a tool to help others and help ourselves. And I read the globalist documents. We, we read them here and there about how they think of us as dumb and want us in the dark. It's all in the WikiLeaks and want to make us poor and hopeless. They use words like hopeless. That's like what's come out in Europe when top judges and stuff get caught running child kidnapping rings. And they, they find the little dead kids down in the bottom of a basement, you know, and a few of them are alive. And, and, they, and, they, and, there's, and, and there's all these videos that, you know, that the police see, but then they have to shut it down because it's national security. That's even mainstream British headlines. Giant pedophile run, network runs the government, shut down because of national security because it bring down the whole government. And it's like three-year-olds begging for mommy, and the globalists just go sit for hours and hear them beg and hear them hopeless. It's like music, little crying three-year-olds begging for mommy that they rape and torture. It's like music to them. And you're like, why would Gruber go on air and say, I love conning people. Let's hurt them. Let's screw them. It's just another extension of this people in ice cream trucks grabbing kids out of the back of yards. I mean, they're just a little less worse than that. They enjoy being dishonorable. <laughs> I'll enjoy getting my hands around their neck politically. <sighs> and man, let me tell you, I feel sorry for the mainstream media. The dishonor, the cowardice, the lies, to write the lies they do about me and Trump. Because let me tell you, there's few people that get to actually sit there and get the same treatment Trump's got. And I'm not complaining or saying, oh, look how big I am. I'm saying it means nothing. I'm glad they attacked me. They're scum. I'm glad the enemies of humanity don't like me. I said I'd take calls. Probably need to launch that phone system. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. But just, I thank my lucky stars every day that I'm not a scumbag. Oh, it's so... You, you people, all you care about is what people think about you. You globalists, you minions, you trendies. Thank God I'm not associated with you. Please lie and demonize all you can. To separate me from you. Police, because let me tell you, I got a little bit of you in me, and I'm ashamed of it. <laughs> I mean, you people are a freaking joke, man. You are the most scumbag, dishonorable filth the world has ever seen. You have it out for poor people to keep them poor? You want us hopeless? <laughs> I mean, God, nobody, why? I'm not putting up with you, and nobody else is for that matter. And that's just a natural, God-given instinct. And that God-given instinct's coming back. And the more they try to suppress it, the more it's going to blow up in their face. I want to play the nuclear war video uh, that's so important. It's on Infowars.com. If they want me to do the third-party plugs, which I want to do, they got to actually give me a folder. So they're always telling me to do that, and then I get it, and I need to. But I got to have a folder to be able to do that. Might be in there, but I missed it. Yeah, we'll do it after the nuclear video, I guess.
Uh, I'm not going to belabor this any. Uh, unique affordable foods are high quality. You can always eat your insurance. 30 to 40% off of the best high quality affordable foods out there. We're running a special right now. Infowarsstore.com. We have 25% off uh, on Rainforest. That ends this weekend. We have 30% off on the G2 Pro Pure King Gravity water filter. Now 30% off at Infowarsstore.com. That is a huge deal uh, as well. Please take advantage of all of that. Infowarsstore.com. Dot com or call toll free 888-253-3139. And they can't stand that we rediscovered America and to have our own platform and to sell high quality products. And they get up on TV and say, oh, it's horrible. He sells water filters. Oh, he's terrible. Oh, he sells seeds. So he sells things. You know, they got Prozac ads every other commercial. I mean, just go to hell. We see right through you. And the listeners get it. Uh, Solutions from Science is an amazing solar panel uh, system. They can expand them out, and their best-selling model, the Perfect Power Solar Generators, are top of the line. Uh, I've got one personally. I've got another unit that's older as well I bought from them. It's expandable, so you can make it as powerful as you want to. Normally, $6,000. I can't believe they're doing this. They're letting them go for around $1,500. Visit PowerGridChaos.com. That's PowerGridChaos.com, and get yours before they are gone. Gone, gone, gone. And don't forget, United States Gold Vault, will you and your family be protected when we have another economic meltdown? I believe an economic crash is coming. It's already happening in most of the world, and you should protect yourself with real money. Do you want to be a victim, or do you want to be prepared? Take action with the company I trust, United States Gold Vault, based right here in Texas. Call today, 844-321-ALEX, 844-321-ALEX. They've created a game-changing gold and silver survival packs filled with physical gold and silver coins that could help safeguard what you will need most in a financial crisis, money, not paper. I personally have secured my emergency backup with gold and silver. Don't wait till it's too late. Call the United States Gold Vault now at 844-321-ALEX, and you'll get a rugged double-locking bank bag to securely store your gold and silver absolutely free. United States Gold Vault, 844-321-ALEX. Okay, I want to go to a few phone calls. Since I mentioned it, here's the nuclear war video that is so critical. I want to thank everybody that's already sharing it, but... Let's get people to watch this. Let's let let's send this out to everybody we know. Let's talk about why the world is warning of nuclear war if Hillary's elected. Let's be inventive. Let's get local TV to cover this. This is very newsworthy. Here's the report. The bottom line on nuclear weapons is that when the president gives the order, it must be followed. There's about four minutes between the order being given and the people responsible for launching nuclear weapons to do so. As president, I will make it clear that the United States will treat cyber attacks just like any other attack. We will be ready with serious political, economic, and military responses. They're voting for peace on planet Earth if they vote for Trump. But if they vote for Hillary, it's war. We came, we saw, he died. <laughs> With her, you'll end up in World War III. I want the Iranians to know that if I'm the president, we will attack Iran. Right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. The U.S. military has just raised the threat level to DEFCON 2. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton is still threatening Russia with military action following unconfirmed reports of further hacking. It's like she's not even concerned about the repercussions. Of course not, because she's... Well, there's a really loud noise. All right, looks like we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. We'll try to get Leanne back on in a few minutes. When the president gives the order, it must be followed. Trendies have been given everything. Now they're nihilists and want to die. But when the fires of hell begin to eat their flesh, they'll beg for their mommies. They always do. November 8th, vote like the world depends on it. Infowars.com, the front lines in the resistance against insanity. All right, I want to take some phone calls right now and into the next segment. Again, big news. Anthony Gutierrez will be playing clips of Trump's speech coming up in the next hour. And where he just an hour ago or 45 minutes ago concluded a speech. 
where he laid out the fact the FBI has been forced to reopen the investigation, smoking devastating guns. I said this on Monday. I said there's no way they can't go after her now. I mean, it's the entire criminal op, them admitting it's criminal, them admitting they're covering up. I mean, it's a whole new precedent when they're putting generals in jail for nothing. And then now they're going to let Hillary skate on this. This is unbelievable. But I'm telling you, the danger level is unprecedented. You can bet your boots they are getting ready to stage some major crap. Blow up a federal building, say it was an Alex Jones listener. I don't know. Just get ready. These people don't give up. All right. We've got uh, Melvin and Chris and Frank and Josh and Chris and so many others. Uh, let's go to Chris and PA. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, how are you? Good, brother. Hey, God bless you and your whole staff for everything you do. I listen to you every day, brother. Thank My you. neighbor uh, listens to you as well. There's there's quite a bit of us Alex Jones fans here. Um, my neighbor's nephew was actually baby Trump in Pennsylvania. In <laughs> awesome. So, awesome, awesome. But uh, I say stick a, a fork in Hillary. She's done. Um, I, I can't believe Well, who knows what uh, curveball they've got, but, but, but I mean, I agree with you. For all intents and purposes, they may be able to bring down Trump or assassinate him, but we've, it's like a battle where both get taken down, and we win because we just, we, we, you know, we've got history on our side. But go ahead, sorry. Um, I, you know, I, I can't believe she's not in jail. And I would say she, she is really a, a sociopath. She has no feelings uh, for any man, whether uh, white, black, I agree. Of, What's the word in Pennsylvania? They now say it's two to four points in favor of Trump. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Alex. Drive, driving around, I talk to a lot of friends. Um, and, you know, naturally, I don't know really anybody supporting Hillary other than uh, there's a couple sheeple. I know. Same drive, thing in Austin. I talk to Democrats. They're not supporting her. And if you drive around, I, I count the uh, the signs, and I'm talking, there's probably like a 1 in 30, uh, probably even higher ratio that actually are for... Amazing, Chris. Great points. And listen to me very carefully, Chris. It's going to be you, the listeners, that are the game changers. Shoot a video, show the signs, talk about it, post it on YouTube. If everybody does that, this will take it over the top. If you are receiving this transmission, I keep telling you, folks, it's not a slogan, it's the truth. You are the resistance. I'm Alex Jones. I've studied history. I've studied the globalist. I know their weak spots. It's quite easy to defeat them as soon as we reach out to folks and let them know this is about self-determination. They attempt to put you into a psychological, cultural, but also physical trance in the final phases. This is mainstream news. So the, the suggestibility of the general public, People are in a near sleep-like state, TV heads. They're, they're just not alive, really. They're, 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 they're in a coma. And that isn't rhetoric. That's what's going on. So we're breaking the matrix here together. Believe me, the rabbit hole goes a lot deeper than Donald Trump. But it's a manifestation of the awakening, another wave in the awakening, in the animating contest of liberty. We're on your calls right now, right into the next hour. I want to just tell you about Harvest Right, harvestright.com. Amazing, incredible dehydrator systems, beautiful little systems as well. Look great as an appliance in the kitchen. I've got one. I bought one over a decade ago. I got another one recently. I've been trying to get them as a sponsor forever. We got them. Harvest Right created the most amazing home appliance, a home freeze dryer that helps you be prepared. This appliance allows you to freeze dry your own food at home. Freeze drying locks in 100% of the foods and nutrients. So even 25 years later, the food will be healthy and tasty as the day you made it. You can freeze dry foods such as garden produce, proteins, and even whole meals like lasagna and beef stew. Harvest Right sent us some amazing freeze dried food and their recipes, you name it. But I mean, I've got the system, so I don't really even need to go off that. I know how good it is. HarvestRight.com or call 800-594-4635. 800-594-4635. Harvest Right. Okay, let's continue with your phone calls here. Who's been holding the longest? Let's talk to Josh in Montana, listening on KMPT, 9.30 a.m. Josh, you're on the air. Thanks for calling. Alex, thanks so much for taking the call. I just want to let you know it's a pleasure to speak with you. I've uh, been listening to you since I was about 14. Uh, the baseball game used in the outhouse and your 
website was scratched into the side of the door and went and looked at it and I was awoken. Um, but got a question for you. Given that the opening, the reopening of this case against Hillary Clinton is coming so late in the campaign uh, trail, just out of curiosity, say she does win the presidency, would she be able to grant herself clemency and exonerate her? From all Nixon tried that, and there was just court of public opinion. He couldn't do it. Uh, and so unless she starts a giant war and somehow has a successful coup and, sh and actually arrest everybody, which which will totally blow up in her face, because we're active, we're exposing, we, people are ready for that. I mean, the military and police are just so ready. And again, they're not perfect, but they're America. The global is trying to overthrow us. So we'll, se we'll settle our differences later after the dust settles. The issue is we're not having a civil war because a little piece of crap George Soros wants us to. And so nobody wants this to go into a hot war. But believe me, the patriots are ready. And if David Brock and all these people think they're going to get away with what they've done, <laughs> they're just idiots. They took our restraint as weakness, our kindness for weakness. And the truth is, that is not what's happened. And they're just starting to get a little taste of things in the information war. I mean, there's like stuff 10 times worse already planned for them that's, that's non-physical. I mean, you think the stuff coming out now is bad? <laughs> I mean, it's just they're... People don't want to totally destroy the government doing this, though. But it's cancer. we got to cut it out. So if this therapy doesn't work, it's going to get worse. We can't cut it out that it's going to go chemo radiation. See what I'm saying? Absolutely. So they want to bang heads, brother. They wanted to bang heads, didn't they? And now they're going to get to bang heads with us, aren't they? Absolutely, they are. And you look at Madeleine Albright and Hillary and all these people, you think they can bang heads physically or metaphysically? No. They've already been banging heads for a long time against innocent children, and God's physically striking them down as we speak. Fourth hour straight ahead, InfoWars.com forward slash show. Your station doesn't carry it. More of your calls straight ahead. Thanks, Josh in Montana. I'll be back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. What they do is they take pure tyranny and they repackage it as trendy. Hillary's now putting out sickening ads with women in the military saying, Russia is homophobic, we're going to take them on. I'm not joking. I've got the article right here saying, hashtag draft our daughters. Oh, make them slaves and make them be conscripted in the military. How liberal. Let's feed them directly into uh, meat grinders. This is the state truly wedding our daughters, our women in front of us, completely taking them away and selling it as a status symbol. You won't need free college because you'll be dead in the doornail. Because I'm sending your kids to war. Oh, you found out those college degrees are worthless? Don't worry, sweetheart. Put on that helmet and Johnny come, G Jenny comes marching home again. Hoorah, hoorah. When Jenny comes marching home again. Hoorah, hoorah. I mean, this is, and it, it goes into, we're going to take on the uninclusive Russia. And all the liberals are like, yeah, yeah, war. Yeah, we'll show them. I mean, it's, oh. And then all the weird liberals like defending radical Islam and mutilating women. I mean, this is a fruitcake group, folks. That story, draft our daughters, pro or Hillary faces backlash over female draft. <laughs> Remember Rahm Emanuel said we're going to have a national draft for everybody? National conscription. But it's liberal, see? It's liberal because he said so. And if he says it's liberal... It's liberal. I mean, they control reality. Rahm Emanuel is my God. He hops around like the Joker. He's a male ballerina. So it's okay. It's all these weird fruitcakes, man. But hey, maybe we're worse than them because you know, these globalists run our lives. Obama. Michael Moore. Running around with six bodyguards and we can't own guns? I mean, just shut up, you hypocritical piece of crap. I'm going to keep going a little bit here with Gucci Artie, so I'm going to go to your call. Shannon in Florida, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, I just have to say I am so honored to even make it <laughs> through your calling line. I am a first-time caller. I've been listening to Thank you forever. You. You're amazing. Thank you for all you do. Well, you're sweet. Uh, what do you think of the whole Hillary thing? 
Oh, my God. Listen, I am streaming it live on CNN right now because apparently, according to the reporters on the Clinton News Network, they're saying that she did not have Wi-Fi on her plane. And so I guess when this news broke, she was coming into this campaign stop in Iowa. Uh, she's speaking now, but they're not really letting you hear what she's saying. So what I'm Well, of course, that's their is, cover. That's their cover. Is because it's not all perfectly scripted, so they don't know what to do. And so that's what they always, in fact, I was saying, oh, her speech is going right now. And I said, what is she saying? And they said, nothing about this. And I said, well, of course she's not, because she never responds. She never responds when she's hit with the proof. She just sits there and smiles. Yeah, and it's that creepy joker smile that you talk about all the time. But what I'm trying to figure out is, A, what does this really mean for the Trump campaign? I mean, obviously it's huge. Everybody knows this. I mean, but two, what I'm trying to figure out is what made Comey make this sudden flip? Why Why all of a sudden is he re -opened? I'll tell you why. Monday it came out that they said, we got to scrub this. We got to cover it up. The president was communicating. He's been caught lying. She's been caught lying. We have them. I mean, it's open and shut. It's like finding... A dead woman in the back of some guy's car. The cops pull you over because you're speeding, and they see blood, so they they pop the back of the truck, probable cause, and there's a dead body, and then they find a video camera in the front of the car with video of the guy killing the woman. What's that called? Open and shut. Open and shut. This is so open and shut, it's probably the definition of open and shut. And then all the absconding and the lying and the cover-ups and just all these other felonies. So she is... Completely devastated, and all the arrogant, crazy, narcissist, control freak, mainstream media people just kept betting and betting and betting and betting and believing because there were just thousands of reporters lying for her, that that gave them some cloak of invisibility. All it did was show them all as the lockstep little creatures they are. All right, uh, I want to go to Anthony Gucciardi, who's going to be hosting the shower in a moment. I'll just continue with your calls. Melvin, Jason, Frank, Ivy, Chris, and others that are patiently holding the toll free number to join us is 800 259 uh, again, the woods are lovely, dark and deep. This election is amazing, but I've got miles to go before I sleep. I've got to, uh, I'm going to follow a bunch of special reports right now. I'm going to get in there and shoot some videos promoting uh, the most important ad of the campaign season. Just an ad trying to stop World War III. It's not even political. It's going viral right now on Infowars.com. And the title of the video uh, is, this viral video has Hillary running scared. So that's up on Infowars.com right now. And I really want to ask folks to get that video and send to everybody you know. I'd like it to have 20 million views uh, between our Facebook channel and uh, our YouTube channels. It's got like a million, 200,000 last time I checked an hour ago. That's great. We should do this, like, post it to Paul's Facebook too. He gets a lot, like, three or four million views on a lot of those videos. So we should do it, like, on different people say, yes, we are posting the link to the YouTube on Facebook. No, no. Post it on Facebook video. See, I'm not here hiding proprietary secrets. I want people to win the fight against the globalist. Mainstream media will do something like post a video one place, find out what has the biggest monetization on it, because I can care less about making money on this. It's negligible. It's about stopping World War III. And then they'll just obsess over one video they promote the most. i found it's best to put it on a bunch of platforms, and then it only makes it bigger. And so this video needs to go on Paul's Facebook, not just my Facebook and, and, and not just his YouTube and my YouTube. We need it everywhere. We need it on every channel we've got. You need to copy it to your channel. You need to get it out to everybody because that's the whole list of subscribers you've got that are going to be seeing this. And every little bit really has a giant effect. I mean, I wish. It's probably put out a version that doesn't have InfoWars on it. So maybe other talk show hosts would use it and, and play it. I just want to stop the globalist. That's the goal here. Now, I want to play a few minutes of Trump uh, as he was about to give a speech just an hour ago, hour and 15 minutes ago, uh, in New Hampshire, learning that the FBI was going back after Hillary. And then I'll hand the baton to Anthony after we play about five, six minutes of this clip. Uh, and then I'll be back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central, uh, Lord willing, because you never know what's going to happen with the way they're coming after free speech. But I got to tell you, uh, Anthony, uh, we're going to skip this break so you have more time to play this clip and then come back and take calls. But uh, we've been just talking during the breaks and stuff because uh, your office is right by the you know uh, TV studio here in the office, larger office. Th we're not just hype driven. I mean, as you know, people that just get excited over nothing. We can feel it. We can see it. Everything Hillary is doing turns to crap. Uh, but we really should be concerned because they are going to pull out all the stops now. The problem is they've already pretty much pulled out 
all the stops propaganda wise. And I don't even get off on it because it's so dangerous, but watching all these chicken neck traders that have worked for the system and are just, they're hired because they're empty yes men and women. They're hired because they're narcissists. They're hired because they're dishonorable. They're hired because they're followers. They're hired because they're cowards. And just to watch this army of scum fl flaying around, flopping around, waddling around, twisting in the wind uh, is uh, justice. It doesn't take much to look at the headlines and realize that the system, the so-called establishment, whatever you want to say, right, has lost its mind. It's, it's gotten so brazen, but at the same time so weak, the news media corporations don't even care anymore. Uh, like some of these headlines we could just read off and it just, it sounds like it's so outlandish it doesn't even, it couldn't be true. Like they just uh, kicked Russia off the UN Human Rights Council but then they re-elected Saudi Arabia, <laughs> okay? Saudi Arabia where if females talk to men they're not related to, they get lashed or they could be dismembered, okay? Uh, Saudi Arabia where women can't drive. Saudi Arabia where women are basically treated like dogs and if you drink alcohol, you could be sentenced to 50 lashes or you could be killed. Um, but Russia's removed from the UN Human Rights Council. And not that Russia is even so great or anything. That is huge news. I didn't know that. It was so crazy to put, well, I mean, they're angels compared to Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah. China, everybody's on it. I, I mean, it's total cuckoo land. That's what I'm saying. Total what do you think of Bloomberg land. coming out and saying, yeah, all these cities let illegals vote and states are passing laws, but Trump's insane. It doesn't exist. <laughs> Actual articles in the first two paragraphs contradicting themselves. Well, you know what the best response is? When you're beaten in an argument, okay, instead of using logic or reason, which is not how this country operates anymore, never, 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 you just say, that's not, that's not the case at all. That's not the case at all. Just like Obama says, there's the election rigging. The elections are totally flawless. There's nothing wrong with Obama the Obamacare, Obamacare's free. It's free. There's no penalties. <laughs> well, anything can be anything when you say it like that, right? So you, you could even say like, wow, it, it seems like maybe Obamacare doesn't work. Works great. <laughs> it's the ultimate answer to anything when you actually can't respond to something. You just say the biggest lie ever, and then what happens is there's like a margin where people fall in, where if you say, for example, I'm a huge pink elephant, uh, but someone else says, that guy's not a pink elephant, the truth, people just mentally, psychologically say, well, it's somewhere in the middle, right? So Yeah, well, I talked about that British psychological warfare manual I read years ago. It said that, like, if, if we've killed 4,000 people in a village, we just announced 10 were killed, and once the real number comes out, people will average it down yeah it's they just say well no one's so crazy they'd lie so deeply about something so it must be half true like you're kind of looking like a pink elephant all the time i am a pink elephant actually no that's 100 percent true and if anyone disagrees with that they're wrong they're racist and they're racist against pink elephants because that's how i identify that's how i feel and if you're going to disagree with me i'm just going to say no i am a pink fluffy elephant and in fact when you touch me it feels like clouds and that's real life that's all true and Hillary's a beautiful woman. She is beautiful. She's Miss America and Miss Universe. We were saying that. You know, we were like North Korea and say, she makes the sun shine, the clouds. I mean, they're only a few steps away from that. Maybe she's the big pink elephant that feels like clouds. I don't know. Uh, I mean, but you know, I, I'm, I am worried, though, because there's this new tactic where they've got articles about me every day that just literally have quotes I never said. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's one way to do it, right? Or the best is also... When uh, they, they take something to attack someone or they'll take something to attack you or something and they'll mix it up and stuff. And it's it's like it's obviously mixed up. It's 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 you're being funny like it's humorous like you get it. You're in on the joke. It's not even Trump charging into piece. a goblin's nest. Kissing goblins. Goblins vomit. <laughs> Catch him in bed with a goblin. That video has 8 million views. I think it's great. I love that video. I think that is Yeah, well, the uh, trolls beautiful. love it because we don't mind being made fun of. We think it's funny. You, you laugh at it. But then they're like, actual news. Look at funny. him crazily talking about goblins. It's a 20-minute rant edited down to <laughs> 10 seconds. As if you're sitting here talking about goblins. But the best is, no, everyone already knows what you're talking about. They're listening. They're listening right now. They're on the websites, right? So it's not like... They, they always act like, oh, he's some internet guy that no one knows about. Look, he's talking about goblins. Like, no, people already know what you're talking about. They're listening. <laughs> That's the whole point. I was likening Hillary and the people as goblins. And I was thinking if he has to hire a few politicos to get in, as long as he isn't, you know, charging into goblins' nest, uh, kissing goblins, goblins vomit, catch him in bed with a goblin. <laughs> you know, as long as he doesn't end up getting in bed with goblins. Don't yeah. we get the metaphor? I totally get it. I love it. I say charge into a goblin's nest all day long. They say goblins are actually the funnest, you know, when the light's off, so. I would, I can only, I, 
And once again, not only am I pink elephant, I have personal experience in that realm as well. And no one could debate that. Well, you, you identify as a, as a goblin. I do, a pink elephant slash goblin, whenever I choose. It depends on my mood. And you know what? We're, I think we should put in bathrooms for elephants. If somebody identifies as an elephant, they get, <laughs> they get a huge trough. They get an elephant room. You know what's funny, though? We're joking around. We're being silly. We're being facetious. But this is the same logic that is supposedly serious. Right. Oh, look, can you guys Google baby elephant getting in a, in, a, in a child swimming pool? Can you guys go to YouTube? Baby elephant uh, 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 climbing into swimming pool. And it, it's trying to get in. And I always want to play this clip and say this is this is Hillary Clinton trying to get out of the email mess. Or this is how easy Obamacare is to work. You see the little, the little, <laughs> little baby elephant trying to get the deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else is funny, too? So you think, oh, this is weird. That Biden video you did that I want to play. At some point today in this hour? Oh, yeah, he's talking about wants to beat up Trump. Talks about, talks about, like, how dare he talk about women like that? I want to bring him behind the gym and beat him up. And then it's all just videos just from one little thing, one little event of him just acting so creepy and weird with these little girls. And then girls. asking 12-year-old girls out on dates, and the mothers yeah. are actually, like, pushing him away. Look at him smelling their hair, though. It's so bizarre. It's so weird. Yeah, I mean, if your girlfriend wasn't in a good mood, she wouldn't like you doing this to her. Well, they're, they're, yeah, this is like it's literal sexual advances. And the problem is there's hours of them. All he does is just grab <laughs> this little girl. He runs at them. And he goes, he's like smelling her hair. And then he goes in for a kiss. Like he's, he's like contemplating the kiss. He's like smelling the hair. And then you can tell him, you can see when he makes a decision, he like goes in to kiss. And then the girl's like, <laughs> the girl like. And he says to the mother, away. I'd like to take your daughter. And, he, and he's like, let me get a one with her alone. And they're all like, ooh, she's like eight years old, 10 years old. I don't know how old she is. Oh, this is so creepy. Super weird. Dude, if some guy was doing that to my daughter, I'd punch him right in the nose. Well, he's going to beat up Trump, so. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> he's a ball. I'm so sick of these wannabe gangsters. I guarantee you, that guy, man, getting a boxing ring with him. I mean, when he was young, whatever, I'd, I mean, I'd just, it'd be a joke. <laughs> what I a still, piece of crap. I still think you should do a, uh, a boxing event with you and another contender. All money goes to charity. I think people would love to watch. You get my that. ass kicked, probably. <laughs> no, I don't know. I get to trade punches with Weldon. <laughs> I'm old now. I can't do it. Anyways, all right, we're gonna skip this break. I want to play this Trump clip. You take over, and I have that other one. Of, yeah, I mean, that's the thing about Biden. Biden caught groping little girls. I mean, you can't make this up. The White House has all these top rappers uh, singing songs at the White House about raping women, and then Michelle's all cracking voice. Trump, the tape. I'm scared. I'm scared. It's non-logic. Remember I played that one song for you? It's literally like about date raping girls and stuff. And here's the thing, though. We're not we're like they make such a big deal. And it's, oh, geez, everything is so horrible. It must be politically correct, blah, blah. And then they invite these people to the White House. It's a big joke. Well, I want to know who wants a woman passed out when they're having sex with them. It's kind of like these Muslims that want 40 virgins. Sounds like a freaking nightmare. <laughs> I mean, uh, who, wants, uh, who wants, who uh, wants, uh, well, it does show these arrested development. These guys like, I get the champagne, put the molly in. They don't know what I did. Do what I did the next day. You know, it's like, bitch slap, hold, boom. They're like, oh, you're so liberal. Uh. But look, it's, it's one thing if those rappers want to rap about that and like rap about killing cops or whatever. Great. They can do, like, cool. That's your yeah, thing. Yeah, just don't run around going, you're so upset about Trump, which they yeah, actually have rappers do. Trump you you can't bad. have it both ways. If you're going to mm -hmm. listen, like, I'll listen to some so-called, you know, lewd music, whatever. I'm not going to listen to that music, though, and then say, oh, my God, did you say a curse word? How dare you? It's the it's the weird, illogic, illogical, like, unreasonable thing where they praise it and invite those people to the White House, but then act like they're going to cry when they heard something. Oh, I know. I mean, the, the Michelle Obama with the fake crack of the voice, I can't sleep. I'm scared, Trump. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and it's, meanwhile, it's literally like... Meanwhile, both their daughters are the there with the big fat goblin, speaking of a real goblin, uh, talking <laughs> about a goblin nest, uh, uh, Rick Ross shaking their asses at the White House with him going, I rape bitches down with the hose. And it, <laughs> Michelle's shaking her ass. It's like a comedy special. It's like, it's, it's, it's not even that we're being funny. It's just funny. You know what I mean? Like, it's not real life. It's so weird and fake. And then people act like they're so upset. Like, Michelle was, her, she was crying. Oh, Glenn Beck said it was the most powerful speech ever. I, See, I told you. <laughs> now I'm going to go on NPR right now and be the apologist for conservatism. I guess it is time to turn the guns in. She was heartbroken at the, the, the mistreatment. They had no idea that people spoke like that, that they, they talked about women in that way. As, as the song is about date raping women, giving them ecstasy so that they don't know they're having sex and they're knocked out in their alcohol, and then 
like orgasming in them. It's like, oh, <laughs> Trump Name said these like, Have you heard Beyonce? She's so wonderful. <laughs> and it's all the same stuff, 50 times worse than Trump. And then Trump's recorded secretly, edited, and make a big deal out of it. And they go, he's put this on TV for girls to hear. But here's the They're the part. ones putting it on TV. It, it, exactly. And they're the ones pushing that stuff in the White House. I don't care if there's rappers that want to rap about that stuff. Great. Like, we're not going to sit here and be like, how dare they say these things? I mean, this is real life, right? But to propose that they're amazing, but anyone else they disagree with that says anything, oh, they're going to cry. So fake, so scripted. It's like a play. It's like a, it's like an elementary school play where you just kind of clap along like, oh, yeah, good job, you know. But it's so obvious and they don't even play the roles, and they just say things like, it's, it's just great, Nothing, nothing's happening, it's totally fine. I mean, Well, we've got the videos of uh, Biden perving out, so I want to let you get to that, get to these other calls coming up. But right now, here is uh, Trump, as he learned, right as he gave a speech, the FBI's reopened the investigation, which just shows that the public knows what's happening, they can't get away with it, the new smoking gun evidence has come out in the WikiLeaks, and this is huge, uh, to quote uh, Trump, here it is. I need to open with a very critical breaking news announcement. The FBI has just sent a letter to Congress informing them that they have discovered new emails pertaining to the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's investigation. And they are reopening the case into her criminal and illegal conduct that threatens the security of the United States of America. Anybody thinks this movement's going away? <laughs> Hillary Clinton's corruption is on a scale we have never seen before. We must not let her take her criminal scheme into the Oval Office. I have great respect for the fact that the FBI and the Department of Justice are now willing to have the courage to right the horrible mistake that they made. Makes you wonder what led them to do that. This was a grave miscarriage of justice that the American people fully understood. And it is everybody's hope that it is about to be corrected. So that is a big announcement that I heard 10 minutes ago. And I guess, obviously, most of you folks have heard about. And in all fairness, for all of the people that have suffered for doing so much less, including just recently, four-star General James Cartwright, General Petraeus, and many others, perhaps finally justice will be done. I don't think anyone's mentioned, uh, earlier Alex broke this, that the Twitter of the individual that was apologetic and saying Hillary did nothing wrong, there was no emails that were bad in any way, who I guess worked for her, he deleted all his tweets. The rest of my speech is going to be so boring. Should I even make the speech? We will talk about borders, right? We will talk about trade. We'll bring back our jobs. We'll strengthen our military. And let's get going, okay?
That's the great Golden Toad. General Flynn is a great general, and I want to thank you for being here. Suppose that Hillary runs Al-Qaeda. You need to try to cover that up. Didn't work, did it? Because you people Just are idiots. Before, general Flynn was going up. We heard this news. I said, General, get up there and keep them busy. Let's, we want to we wanna digest what just happened here. Thank you, General. In 11 days, we're going to win New Hampshire. By the way, the when they fired Flynn my for exposing it two years ago, how much they hate the fact that Flynn basically runs a campaign. To win back the, the White the House. The Defense Intelligence. Basically the Army. I mean, Anthony, it's just, it's, it's, it's so good to see finally America's instincts kick back in and these criminals that have hijacked the nation are crapping their pants. When you see Hillary climb up in the plane today, she's like a rat going on board. I mean, she was just stumbling around like she was half dead. I mean, the weakness of this demon. The boiling point has been reached 100%. Listen to how mad those people are in the audience. That is how everyone feels in this entire country. Whether or not you even want to ascribe it to each individual candidates or whatever, this has been happening for a long time. Hillary's long, out long to get time. us. She's a piece of filth. The system. She the admits she hates America over. and prosperity and guns and everybody. She hates black people. She hates Hispanics. She hates whites. She hates poor people. She's a piece of filth. We all bought into the lie at one point in our life. And now as a collective, though... The country is literally saying, oh, my God, it's been a lie the entire time. And I'll tell you, I'm not bragging, but I am, I'm, I'm not proud. I have a feeling of, of, of intense satisfaction of com not completion. But if they got me now, you know, I, I, I feel like I've fulfilled my, my true mission uh, because I know and the enemy knows that they admit it. Our resistance, what we've done, breaking down the enemy's operations is the heart of every core resistance operation now. And to see it duplicating now, it's, it's just it's, it's, it's fantastical, Anthony. I mean, I don't care about big buildings or money or jet airplanes. I, I really care about stomping these globalists, and God is delivering. It's kind of like in a medieval siege when you've got the castle, and the castle's being defended, and that's the system, and you have the battering rams, and somebody's got to push the battering rams, and they get shot by the archers, and the, the arrows are flying everywhere and stabbing, hitting people, and there's blood everywhere, and they're dying. But somebody's still got to push the battering ram up to the gates because if those gates don't get open, then nothing's going to exactly. work. Exactly. The trendies keep thinking I'm getting beaten because I'm full of arrows. They don't get, I know what I'm doing. You're bashing down the We're gate, We're ramming this son of a bitch down. And I'm telling you, those doors are falling right now. They're on fire. The enemy is beginning to turn and run. Let's just hope they don't fail forward and launch a big war. Anthony, take over on the other side. We'll show uh, incredible footage of the pervert uh, vice president. How dare him attack Trump? He is a pervert filth. Seems like the FBI, now that I think about it, actually always waits till Friday to announce things to do with uh, Hillary Clinton's emails. Nonetheless, it's still a big story. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff for the closing of the final fourth hour today on this Friday edition. It's the Alex Jones Show. I'm Anthony Gucciardi. Honored to be invited to host the program. We're going to talk about how the UN Human Rights Council voted out Russia but re-elected Saudi Arabia, where, again, if you're, if you're a woman and you talk to a man you're not related to, oh, well, you could get your arms cut off and get lashed. And uh, if you drink alcohol, you know, you could, you could get lashed as well. Um, if you drive a car as a female, except for southern, uh, certain areas, like certain provinces and stuff, that is almost a fatal sentence. But the Human Rights Council, they, they're good. They, uh, Saudi Arabia gets to be re-elected. Russia's out. Not that Russia's amazing anything, but Saudi Arabia, right? Of course, because there's funding there and things like that. We're also going to play this Biden video shortly here, this weird, creepy Biden video. And the truth is that it's not even about like, look, Trump and his people are very smart because they see the fact that the boiling point has been reached and people are pissed off. Right now, Biden can go and act all weird and creepy with literally little girls like sniffing their hair and stuff. It's just weird. And I guess no one's concerned about that. Because what happens is when you're on the side of the political correctness system and you're on, on the side of like always acting like you're upset by everything and just playing, it's a fake act, uh, then you can kind of get away with more things, right, when you act so offended by everything. But the truth is in real life, that's, that doesn't matter, right? So it is still creepy when, when Biden is like literally trying to kiss Girl, little girls and they're like pushing away from them. And this is just at one event. So we're going to play that too. First, I want to remind you. On InfoWarsLife.com, Brain Force, 25% off is ending this weekend if we even have enough to go to Sunday. So 25% off is a pretty imp unprecedented amount. I mean, it's been at least, what, 
several months, six months since it's been uh, that rate. And of course, it is selling out. So Brain Force is, in my view, the best nootropic out there. It has prescription ingredients from Europe, as in in Europe, they are designated as prescription. They're not here. You can get them in the Brain Force formula. And it really, really works. And what I mean by that is it's clean, as in if I take two Brain Force, I feel more alert. I feel like I can uh, speak more clearly. I feel like I'm more apt to want to go ahead and do things like, you know, host this show right now, right? So it really works for me and a bunch of people um, throughout the world. There's thousands of reviews, five-star reviews. Check it out at InfoWarsLife.com. And also, storable food is 30 to 40% off. Who knows what's going to happen in the world, and it's always good to have some storable food. It lasts 25 years, so there's really no loss there. It's a great investment. And if it doesn't, if in 24 years you decide you don't need it, you can cook it and you can eat it. So it's just basically going to the grocery store except a long-term investment. That's all at InfoWarsLife.com. Check it out. Now, what I want to do is I want to go to this Biden video. Now, again, again, this is one of those things where it's not even Trump versus Hillary. It's just real life versus completely insane. Just like the stories I've talked about today with the headlines, they are insane. Um, the truth is that political correctness, so-called, you know, that thing we always talk about where how dare someone said something about a female? How dare someone said something? Blah, blah, blah. People acting like they're upset, using it as a form of domination, verbal domination, intellectual domination, thought control, as a way to kind of prop themselves up and make them feel like they're part of something, right? Well, Joe Biden goes and, and they do this whole act that they're, they're so upset about what Trump said, which isn't good, by the way. <laughs> okay, not saying, not saying Trump said anything great or that he's even that great, but I'm saying they act all like they're crying and stuff, yet they're bringing um, rappers to the White House who talk about dosing up girls with MDMA and uh, presumably date raping them. And then Biden is like, oh, I'm going to go beat him up because of his statements on women. Then he does the creepiest stuff ever, and this is just only in one event. So let's play this video. If we've got it queued Creepy up. Creepy Joe Biden has hit a new low. Coming out saying because Trump talked about women throwing themselves at him 11 years ago, that he wants to take him behind the woodshed and basically beat him up. The press always asks me, don't I wish I were debating him? No, I wish you were in high school. I could take him behind the gym. <laughs> If we showed you all the footage of Joe Biden groping women and children, it would take five hours. Just at one campaign event, he gropes eight different little girls where mothers even kind of come over and get between them. He tells little girls that he'd like to date them. We've all seen news reports at Disney World and stuff where people have gotten indicted for just touching on kids as cartoon characters. Joe Biden is doing it in front of everybody over and over and over again, and then has the nerve to imply that Donald Trump, who no one ever made these claims on until the campaign, is supposedly a pervert. But what he said he did and does is a textbook definition of sexual assault. And think, no, no, think about this. But it's more than that. He said, because I'm famous. Thank you. Because I'm a star. I can do things. Other people can't. <laughs> Thank you. What a disgusting assertion for anyone to make. Here's the bottom line. No one we've ever seen in politics has even been halfway as creepy as Joe Biden with women and children. Unless you're talking about creepy Tim Kaine, who takes it to an even higher level. Long before Tim Kaine was in office, he consistently protected the worst kinds of people. Lem Tuggle raped, sodomized, and murdered Jesse Geneva Havens after being paroled for murdering a 17-year-old girl. Tim Kaine defended him. Richard Lee Whitley sexually assaulted and murdered his elderly neighbor. Tim Kaine defended him. 
Outside Whitley's execution, Tim Kaine said, something personal in me will die with Whitley. Percy Walton brutally murdered three people. As governor, Tim Kaine commuted his sentence, citing concerns disproved by the courts. Yen Sorin and his girlfriend murdered Derek and Nancy Hasem, stabbing them to death in their home. On his last day as governor, Tim Kaine tried to have Soaring sent to Germany, where parole would have been possible in just two years. Tim Kaine. He has a passion for defending the wrong people. America deserves better. And now we've got slimy, crooked Hillary slithering around at campaign events with only 10 days out from this big election with Michelle Obama squeezing and hugging on kids. And I actually have a pang of anxiety when I see this snake coming over to a child because I know how she's funded the most radical Islamists to sexually mutilate millions of young girls in Africa and in the Middle East, and how Uma Abedin, that she stays with in the same hotel room's mother, is the top Islamic scholar pushing mutilation of young women having their genitals cut off, and how she backs ISIS and Al-Qaeda involved in all this persecution and murder of hundreds of thousands of Christians. It's just so crazy to realize what a group of freaks we're actually dealing with. But then it only gets worse. We've got at the White House famous rappers that talk about date rape in their lyrics and drugging women and raping them and who talk about cop killing at the White House with their children in these big concerts they put on. So publicly saying rape women is good. Trump jokes about women throwing themselves on him and how he could do whatever he wanted. That's the end of the world and horrible for children, but they're doing something a hundred times worse on television, in our faces, and then telling us how evil Donald Trump is. The truth is Hillary and the Clintons, along with the Bushes, have been raping this country far too long, and the sleeping giant is awakening. I can do things other people can't. So you know what? Perfect example. It, it amazes me and concerns me that people don't seem to understand. The people that really, really think that all these individuals are just pure of heart and they're so upset by these comments that Trump made or so upset by whatever it is that they're claiming to be upset by. I mean, <laughs> it's worse than House of Cards. If, and if you've seen House of Cards, Frank Underwood, uh, Kevin Spacey, one of the greatest actors of all time, perfectly gets it down to a science. Just imagine uh, a politician sitting there just literally examining to the downright statistics of what to wear for that given performance. This is many of them, right? with their event, like, oh, if I wear this type of blue, psychologically it makes this difference, or the female saying, if I you know, do my hair this way, right? They're just 100% concerned about how I can weaponize something to use against the other candidate or use to get my support up or whatever. Do you, does anyone really think that Biden was just so upset? Like he just was gonna cry because he was so concerned by those statements. I mean, even at the most base level, unless you live under a rock, okay, let's let's say let's pretend you are just like this pure of heart person that somehow managed to become the vice president of the United States or president or whatever. Like you're such a pure hearted person. You never had to deal with any corruption, none of that existed. Like you never had to do anything to get to that point, just because you're so pure. Even going to the movies, even reading the news. <laughs> You should be aware of these things. You should be aware that people talk like this just existing on this planet. I've heard a bazillion worse things said just walking down the street, okay, to where I'm not going to get triggered by something like that. Is it good? No. Is it, is it great that people say these things? No. Okay. I say horrible things sometimes too as a joke or when I'm not really meaning it truly in my heart, right? People say crap all the time. So, these politicians, the most disturbing part, isn't even that, <laughs> that they pretend all of this. It's that they get up there and weaponize things and people think it's real. It is totally crazy. It's just like, you know, we talk a lot about Russia and it's because of the fact that they're just, just everything is about Russia now. All the news is like Russia is going to do all these horrible things. Now, this is a great article. I was talking about uh, talking to Mikhail Thalen who is a writer for InfoWars.com, and we talked about this before it happened. In this article, NBC News, Payback, Russia Gets Hacked, Revealing Putin Aid Secrets. A Ukrainian group calling itself Cyber Hunter has released more than a gigabyte of emails and other material from the office of one of Vladimir Putin's top aides, 
uh, the show that show Russians Russia's fingerprints all over the separatist movement in Ukraine. Now, I'm proud of NBC News for saying payback question mark. So the concept that Russia went in and did the DNC leaks, right? Who knows who it was, whatever. But the, the concept that the U.S. is not going to retaliate or do some type of attack on Russia cyber warfare-wise is absurd. There's so much going on at all times. There's so much interplay that we don't know about. There's so much that it's basically sometimes it leaks out. Like sometimes we see the little tentacles of the octopus, and we are delusional if we think that 95% of the things that go on are not kind of like inside baseball interplay within the political systems. I mean, it's absurd. You can even watch like basic YouTube documentaries about donor parties and the politicians going to these people's houses, billionaires' houses, and they're like, well, we would never ask them to do anything for us. I just watched uh, one of those on HBO the other night, the billionaire donors giving millions and millions of dollars to whoever candidate, right? And then saying, well, I just give it to them, like, like a really bad scripted speech. I just give them $5 million because I really just, and they like look away all the indicators of lying. They're like, because I believe in them in my heart. And they're like, well, you would never gain anything from giving them $5 million. They wouldn't, you know, help you financially in any way. No way. You know, it's just so obvious. It's such a rigged system. It's a joke. It is pathetic. It is absurd to me that people believe it's real or at the same time, they just say everything's good to fit in with those systems. I have friends that are business owners, uh, very successful. I have friends from Silicon Valley. I have friends from multiple different angles and they all see this for the truth. And there is growing movements beyond just the so-called awake, so-called uh, people in the know, right? There's people that you wouldn't even ever suspect that get all of this, that see all of this, like I think most people do. But they're starting to get so upset by it, like they're starting to get so upset by the political correctness BS, or they're starting to get so upset seeing these headlines every day that are just so absurd that even the Silicon Valley who uh, individuals you would say they're so liberal, whatever. Let me just tell you, most of those people are just acting like they're okay with all the things going on because they don't want to screw up their financial ties. Uh, people like Peter Thiel represent a large percentage of uh, Silicon Valley executives and individuals. Not necessarily that they even support Trump, but that they're just tired of all of this, right? They're just tired of all of it. And the big, big names that aren't saying anything are just afraid because if you go against the establishment system, of course, you're going to get backlash, right? But that is the whole point of this fight. I mean, why even do anything if you're not going to do something with meaning, right? Why even take a stand for anything if you're not going to do what you truly believe? It is the epitome of going against your purpose. And I'm not sure uh, what we're showing up on screen, Russia there, but let's talk about that again for a second here. Russia loses UN Human Rights Council place, Saudi Arabia reelected. So to get into this one, truly an amazing headline. The 47 places on the council are distributed on a regional basis with staggered ballots seeing a third of the body reelected each year. Russia had finished its three year term and was running against Hungary and Croatia for the two available seats from Eastern Europe. With Hungary far ahead, Croatia received the votes of 114 of the 193 member countries, and Russia was selected on 112 ballots. Um, Saudi Arabia sailed through the Asian ballot with 152 votes and will represent the region on the UNHRC alongside China, Japan, and Iraq for the next three years. China's great, too. <laughs> South Africa, Rwanda, Egypt, and Tunisia were chosen from the African group. Cuba and Brazil from Latin America and the Caribbean and the U.S. and U.K. will represent Western Bloc, which compromises Western Europe and North America. So the 14 chosen members will be tasked with formulating the U.N.'s official position on conflicts occurring around the world, as well as the domestic policies of member states. And NATO is tasking Germany with protecting Lithuania and stationing tanks on the border uh, to defend against Russia. Now, this is important to think about the concept of Saudi Arabia being a uh, dignitary, uh, a written authority on developing the United Nations official doctrine on how to deal and how to correspond with human rights, okay, and, and kicking Russia out. But Saudi Arabia gets 152 votes. Who are the 152 people that think it's okay that Saudi Arabia treats women like dogs? 
Because you see, I'm for real human rights. I'm for real um, women's rights, as in giving them power to do what they want to do with their life and meaningful purpose. Not chopping their arms off for talking to men that they're not related to. But once again, see, that's the insanity that most people realize, but they don't want to talk about because it's scary. It's scary to talk about things like that. We'll be right back. This is The Alex Jones Show, fourth hour. A lot more to come. Stay tuned. So, all right, let's talk about this piece. Johnson & Johnson loses baby powder cancer case and awards a California woman $70 million per judge decision. And two other cases uh, were rewarded $55 million and uh, $72 million from women that are getting, uh, according to this, reportedly ovarian cancer from baby powder. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about ex-Putin advisor's death in Washington Hotel was a complete accident. He was found with extensive injuries in his hotel, and then it was an accident. Um, and ISIS reportedly murders hundreds of Iraqi civilians as it defends Mosul. But first, I did want to remind you one final time, because it is Friday. This is the last segment of the show. It's your last chance. InfoWarsLife.com, Brain Force, 25% off mega sale is ending this weekend. Uh, as soon as it starts to really sell out, you're going to have to raise it back to full retail price. And it will be over. So now is your time. If you already have tried Brain Force, you like it, stock up. It's 25% off. It's pretty, pretty absurd. Uh, I pop at least two of those every morning. Makes me feel really good. I don't drink coffee. I don't like coffee. I like Brain Force instead. And I didn't even used to take um, anything like it. And I, it, I actually kind of had an aversion to the idea at first. But once we started developing it and I tried it, I was like, oh, wow, I don't really feel speedy or anything like that. I just kind of feel focused and clear. And a lot of people seem to say the same thing, and there's a lot of five-star reviews about it. So InforceLife.com, BrainForce, 25% off, ending this weekend. And the storable food by InfoWars Select is 30 to 40% off, and once again, lasts 25 years. So if you decide in 24 years and nine months and two days that you don't want to use it anymore because everything's peachy and everything's great, that's awesome. You can eat it, cook it up, give it to homeless shelter. Uh, it's real food, so it's not like, you know, you have no use for it, even if you don't, you know, need it for an emergency, which hopefully you won't. But it's good insurance. It's like going to the grocery store for 25 years in case something happens. All right, let's get into some of this news. Johnson Johnson loses baby powder cancer case. California woman awarded $70 million. So, St. Louis jury on Thursday awarded a California woman more than $70 million in her lawsuit, alleging that years of using Johnson & Johnson's baby powder, which everyone uses, by the way, Caused her cancer, the latest case raising concerns about the health ramifications of extended talcum powder. Yes, talcum itself. The jury ruling ended the trial that began September 26th, and she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer in 2012. We're pleased the jury did the right thing. They once again reaffirmed the need for Johnson & Johnson to warn the public of the ovarian cancer risk associated with this product. Earlier this year, two other lawsuits in St. Louis ended in jury verdicts with a combined $127 million. Two others in New Jersey were thrown out, and um, other individuals won. Uh, 2,000 women have filed lawsuits that were similar, and lawyers are reviewing thousands of other potential cases. So it's, it's a serious deal. Yet, of course, no one talks about that. And Johnson & Johnson just pays off the fees and the fines and continues operations. So definitely want to investigate that. Now let's talk about this. Ex-Putin advisor, death in Washington, hotel and accident. This is what we were talking about when I say that 95% of things that go on, it's all interplay. It's all, it's all the uh, politicians themselves with their little weird vendettas and they're all like trying to screw everyone o like one over and like get ranked up and there's little micro attacks happening and mega cyber attacks. U.S. officials say the death of a former Vladimir Putin advisor, his top one, whose body was found in Washington, D.C. with extensive injuries was an accident. An acute ethanol intoxication was a contributory case of his death. He was found alone in his DuPont Circle hotel room with blunt force injuries to his head, neck, torso, upper body, and lower extremities. Clearly, it was just an accident. See, that's why you read these headlines. It's so, it's so absurd. Why would... It's so crazy. So blatant and broad. All right. It has been an exciting fourth hour. I'm Anthony Gucciardi. This is the Alex Jones Show. Alex will be back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central Time, live. Lots more to discuss.